Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this special Friday night program on miracles, testimonies of miracles in our lives. Um, I've been talking about this program now for several weeks. I've asked people uh, if you've had uh, miraculous experiences in your life uh, and you're willing to share them publicly, uh, let me know and we can all you know, discuss that together and celebrate these miracles. Um, right now I have uh, uh, Stacy Cook from Arizona and Jonathan uh, from uh, Tyler, Texas with me. I'm expecting Sister Renee Rowland any minute. And I've also invited uh, Lily Girl uh, and uh, I'm probably forgetting somebody. So we have a, a few people that have said that they do have miracles. I did put a notice in the chat room, if you didn't notice it, uh, that it uh, just saying that if you would like to join this panel tonight, uh, it's open to anybody who wants to come on and, and uh, tell the story of the miracle in your life. Uh, if you do want to do that, just make a comment in the chat room in capital letters. That way uh, I'll notice it and uh, uh, send me uh, um, an email, sincitypreacher at gmail.com. And then what I'll do is I'll send you back an email with the link so that you can click on it and join this uh, panel. Okay, so let me know if you are uh, want to join us. Otherwise, we're just going to go ahead right now. Uh, before we get started, share our miracles. Let me just ask uh, um, uh, Stacy and Jonathan to just introduce themselves to everybody. Uh, just take one minute and just tell them who you are. Uh, we'll start with Sister Stacy Cook. Hello, everybody. Hello, Saints. I'm Stacy Cook from Gilbert, Arizona. Okay. Nice and, to be here. Yeah, and, and Stacy, uh, I, I want to remind you again that uh, audio is a little bit, uh, volume is okay. a little low. So try to make sure you get close enough to your, your speaker, uh, and that'll be helpful. Okay. Um, okay. okay. And, uh, and Stacy's uh, been participating in the congregation now for quite a, quite a while and, and uh, very active in the comments and the chat room. And uh, now we get to see her and hear her. So that's a okay. blessing. We have uh, Jonathan here also. Uh, Jonathan, uh, introduce yourself to everybody, please. Yeah, I'm Jonathan Bowers uh, from Tyler, Texas. And I do a lot of research in higher dimensional geometry. And I'm kind of known on the internet as polyhedron dude or, uh, or in a field called Googology, the study of large numbers. Uh, that's amazing. You know, um, Renee's son, uh, James, uh, he, he was asking us recently, you know, how he always likes to stick in the, his head in there and, and, and make a comment on the, pro, the pro programs. And, and he was talking about a Google. Do you know what a Google is or something in a large number? So uh, uh, he'd probably enjoy talking to you about that. He's, uh, he's way advanced beyond his years in his, uh, his knowledge of uh, science. So so uh, he, he'd be probably be fascinated with you. I, I hope that he has a chance to meet you, uh, Jonathan. Yeah, he reminds me of me when I was growing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you've seen him and you know who I'm talking I see, about. You know, he reminds me of myself. <laughs> uh oh, oh no, Renee's here now. And I, 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 you know, we, oftentimes we talk behind Renee's back. And uh, <laughs> uh, Renee, uh, she, she joined us, but she left and comes back because a lot of times, as I told you, Stacy, if things aren't, the technical things aren't working exactly right, you leave and come back. Renee, can you hear us okay? And Renee, everything working all right? Yeah, she'd probably have to leave and come back again. Okay. Um, She's got her microphone turned off now, but okay, let me just proceed because I'm sure she'll figure the technical problems out. Um, okay, let me start off just kind of by introducing the, uh, the, the subject tonight this way. Um, if you've been following my channel, you probably are aware of my, uh, my testimony. I, I, I got saved 32 years ago. And... Um, my, uh, oh, there she is. I don't want her to miss this introduction. Still not, still not working? Oh, can you hear me? I, I can't get the sound to work. I, I can hear you. I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I can hear you, but you, you can't hear us, huh? Wow. 
Look, she's only done like a hundred programs with us. She'll you know? figure it out. Hey, we need a miracle. Lord, Lord, help us with Renee's technology. Yes, yes, Lord. We're right now. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so December of 1986, um, my mother died. Nobody had died in my family prior to that. So this is the first time I had to face death of a loved one. And uh, everything changed in my life. I, I, I knew I needed answers then. I wanted to know what happens after we die and what is the purpose of life. So um, fortunately, uh, the movie Jesus of Nazareth. Now I can hear for a second. Yay. Hi, guys. I didn't know what was. I didn't want to interrupt you. I'm so sorry. All right. Well, Renee. Luke, I, I don't hear you at all. I don't know what's going on. I think I might need to go through a Google Chrome lately. If I don't use Google as my search engine, it, it starts messing up. So Why I'll try again. It? Okay. Yeah, I'm so use, sorry. Use it. That's what I have to do. If I don't use Chrome, it won't work. Uh, okay. She'll, she'll be back. But, um, so um, it was December of 1986. And in December, they show all these movies about Jesus. So I, I saw this movie, Jesus of Nazareth, and I'd seen it before, but it didn't have an impact on me. But at this point in my life, uh, it was it was powerful and it moved me. And at the end of the movie, they ran the credits and the last thing on the screen, it said, for more information, read the Bible. Oh, and so, yeah. Uh, yeah, what, it, what that's exactly what I needed to hear. And I went to the yes. Bible and I started reading it, hoping for some answers. What's the purpose of life? What happens after we die? So as I read the Bible and understood um, who Jesus is and what he's done for me and this promise of eternal life, and uh, I believed and I got saved and I've been saved for 32 years. And uh, it's been this peace and joy and, and the blessing uh, of this uh, uh, Christianity that I'm uh, enjoying. But, uh, you know, I got saved just because I, I believe, and uh, it, it didn't take me a lot of study. Um, I'm reading the Gospel of John, and I believed it, and it didn't take me uh, there. I didn't have a lot of arguments and it needed a lot of answers, like an apologetics. I just believed and got saved, and uh, uh, I've had this faith and confidence ever since, but I did go through a time where I started really studying apologetics, you know, the, uh, how do I know the Bible's true? So, so I studied and learned that the manuscript evidence and the archaeological preservation of the of the everything and his, the historical accuracy of everything and studied all and all that study in apologetics reinforced my faith. I didn't right. have to have it, but it made my faith yes. even stronger. Uh, then yes. uh, I experienced miraculous things. And these miraculous things we're going to talk about tonight are also the things that uh, the Jews were demanding. Give us signs to prove yes, yes. your claims are true. And Jesus did all these miracles. And, uh, you know, he keeps on doing miracles. And they keep on demanding a sign. He said, well, yes. the sign I'll give you is the sign of Jonah. As, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three nights. He was prophesying his death, burial, and resurrection and saying that will be the ultimate sign proving his claims. And so yes. uh, the, the idea of miracles being signs for us and proof, uh, it's not a new thing. It's a, it, it was necessary to jumpstart the church, to get the, the apostles, the, the, uh, the, the faith that they needed. And um, I believe these miracles are still happening today. I'm experiencing yes. them. Here we got Jonathan and Stacy and Renee. We've experienced miracles, and the miracles not only are an answer to our prayers, but they also add to our faith, reinforce our faith that God is active in our in our lives. So I'm hoping that tonight, by sharing these miracles, people will understand that God's still answering prayers, and these miracles can strengthen our faith. Uh, so that's the premise I want to lay down first. Uh, let me ask. Uh, uh, Stacy, I know you've got uh, a lot to say. Uh, I'd like for you to give me uh, like a, a, a brief sketch of, of the miracle. And then as everybody gets through these miraculous stories, we're going to go back and, and rehash each one a little bit more. 
Uh, so I, I'm going to ask. Oh, there's Renee now. Okay. Hey. Oh, sister, everything okay? I can't hear. I can't hear oh, again. No. I hear you. I hear you, Luke. Yes. Jonathan, speak to her. I don't hear Luke at all. Yeah, hear, hear Luke. Wow. Speak to her, Jonathan. Hey, bro. I'm so sorry to keep interrupting. I, I don't know how to. I mean, I've restarted my computer. Jonathan, talk to her. And ask I, her I can see your mouth moving. I can't hear anything, Luke. She can't hear you, Luke. Yeah, I know that. I, I know she can't hear me, but Jonathan, talk to her so we can test I don't know how to fix it. There you go. I've tried to come in five times. Is that Mark? No. Uh, yeah, is that Mark? Who is that? Jonathan. Yeah. So I don't hear him either. Can you hear me? Oh, there. That's oh, there he is. Yeah, okay. he fixed it. Jonathan, well, Luke. Maybe Jonathan can't no, hear No, no, Luke. Guys. Still don't hear him. I, I hate you. interrupting you guys. I don't know what to do. Stacy, I'll just y'all proceed. I'll just keep trying to come in, and when I hear y'all, just okay. Go. Yes, Renee can hear me. Can you hear me, Renee? Yes, ma'am. I yeah. sure can. Okay. Okay. Can you hear you? Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. I'll try again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think she can hear Jonathan either. Okay. All right. Well, usually when she leaves and comes back, it, it works. But yeah. She's made several attempts. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, let's let's just proceed, and we'll we may be interrupted a few times trying to get her everything working. Okay. You can hear me. I can okay. hear you. All right. Let me tell you what you missed. Please the last, forgive uh, me. The last, uh, okay. the last twelve minutes, I'll tell you what you missed briefly. Okay. We, as usual, were talking behind your back, sister. Ah. You know, are you worried? <laughs> Are you worried what we were saying? Uh, no. You know when we talk behind your back, it's nothing but but praise. I know you guys are the sweetest. Yeah. So good to well, see you, Stacy. Um, I've um, we've got Jonathan with us from Tyler, Texas. Stacy Cook from Arizona, and uh, we're going to talk about our miracle miracles in our lives. I just kind of laid down a foundation for the program, explaining that. Uh, Look, I, I just simply, it just simple faith got me saved. But then after that, miracles have strengthened my faith. God's still yeah. answering our prayers. He's doing miraculous things still. And mm -hmm. so um, we want to share these miracles. And so other people can. Doesn't do he use people to often do those miracles sometimes? He uses yeah. his people. So when we don't show up, Yes. Yeah, I know. I know you got a story about people, people, God using people for your miracle. Let's start. I've asked uh, Stacy and Jonathan, um, since we all got a lot to say, to each give a, a, a brief uh, uh, story of our a miracle. And then after we've all we've talked, then we can go back and go into more detail. Like what it was. Yeah, like that, that, that's, that's why how we can uh, make sure that... Uh, we're not waiting for 30 minutes for before the next person gets a turn. So, uh, okay, uh, Stacy Cook, go ahead. Well, my miracle was in 2007. I had a high-risk pregnancy with my son. He was born premature. They said well, they didn't give us much hope. Once I was admitted into the hospital, I was there to stay until I delivered. That was eight weeks. And I was high risk. He was high risk. They didn't think we'd make it. So that's, you know, I don't know if you want me to say any more, but that kind of sets it up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. You go elaborate a little bit more if you'd like. And, uh, uh, okay. You know, maybe okay. if you want to take our yeah. 10 minutes to go into a little bit more detail, feel free. Okay. So I'm going to back it up to about 2006, maybe a little before then. So I had four children at home. I had two in high school, one in junior high, and then I had a daughter who was six. And so I pretty much, we thought we were done with children. Well, the Lord had gave me three dreams, and these were very vivid dreams. And the way I always explain it is, it's like he was persuading me. You know, this, the last dream I had, the third dream was very vivid. And in the dream, I had twins. And one of the twins I was holding didn't, I, I don't want to say didn't look right. It was a beautiful baby, but I felt in my soul something was wrong. And in the next scene, I'm in the hospital, the same dream, but the next scene, I had delivered this beautiful boy. And so... You know, after the third dream, I'm like, God, I don't 
want any more children, you know, and, and well, without going into too much details, I, you know, he just put it into, he put it in my heart, the desire. And three miscarriages later, I was ready to give up with the third miscarriage. It was really hard. I was on vacation. I was in Hawaii. I had a pretty bad miscarriage and I went to the doctor. They did surgery and the doctor did not, I was scheduled to leave to go home that day, the next day. And the doctor insisted I had the DNC. I had the surgery before I got on the plane or I could have a lot of complications because it was a six hour flight. So I got, you know, I went through the surgery that day. I got on the plane under anesthesia with my family, just totally out of it. I was really just heartbroken. I'm, I, you know, I said, I'm done. I, I can't go through this again because it was my third miscarriage. Well, you know, so, you know, I went on birth control. I got pregnant again. And for three months, I was just having anxiety. You know, what if I lose this baby? What if I go through this again? Well, I made it to three months, went in for my checkup. They didn't ultrasound. The doctor said, baby looks great. Heartbeat is strong, you know, and I was terrified I was trying to have faith and rely on what the Lord was giving me. You know, he gave me the dreams. He put the desire there. And, you know, I even had family that were like, why are you doing this to yourself? You have few, four beautiful children. The only way I can explain it is, really, do you think I want to try to go through a loss again? No, you know, but. So I, I tried to hold on to faith and, and trust the Lord. I made it to three and a half months and I was getting excited. Uh, one day I started having pain, really bad pain. And so I think it was my husband that took me to the doctor. They did an ultrasound. The doctor said, there's no heartbeat. You know, I seen the picture of the baby baby was gone, no heartbeat, and I was devastated. So, you know, he said, the doctor said, we're going to schedule you for surgery on Monday. This was on a Friday when I was there. So I said, okay, I left there and I was just numb. I wasn't mad at God. I wasn't upset at that point. I was just numb. So I, as I, on my way home, I, was with my mom and I said, you know, I got to stop by the grocery store. I have to feed my six-year-old. So she went to the grocery store with me and she looked at me and she said, you're still pregnant. I said, well, that's a really mean thing to say because I was, I was just in there. I seen the ultrasound. There's no heartbeat. The baby's gone. How could you say that to me? And she said, I can't help it you better make sure because you're still pregnant. The baby's still alive. And I said, really? Well, so I went home, I called my doctor and I said, this is what my mom said. You know, now I'm worried. He said, well, if you want reinsurance, he said, the baby's, the baby's gone. But if you want reinsurance, come in my office tomorrow, which was Saturday and we'll do another ultrasound. So me and my husband went in and the ultrasound tech was, you know, she was doing the ultrasound and she just looked at me and she was shocked. She goes, oh my gosh. And my husband and I looked at each other. She goes, I'm going to get the doctor. I'm going to get the doctor. And we were like, what? And the doctor came in and he did the ultrasound. He said, oh, he said, there's a heartbeat. I said, what do you mean? You know, my husband and I were like, what do you mean? What is going on here? He said, well, you lost baby A. This is baby B. You lost the twin. This is baby B. And this baby is viable. Okay. This baby has a heartbeat. And I said, well, you know, I didn't feel very secure about it because I was thinking, oh, I might lose the twin now. Now I got to go through this, you know, and so he said, 
there's a good chance you will lose this baby too because the twin might take out the other twin. So go home, go on bed rest, and I'm going to see you back next week. So that's what I did. I went on bed rest for about four weeks. I made it four weeks. Every week I went in, they got a heartbeat. They finally released me off of bed rest, you know, well, everything was going great. Then at 19 weeks, it was on a Sunday. I went to the restroom. I felt a kind of a gush of water. Well, with my other pregnancies, I never had my water, never ruptured, never broke. So I didn't know what it was. I went to the doctor Monday. I was 19 weeks. My doctor Monday said, this is the worst thing that could have happened. Go home. You're going to lose the baby. When you start having contractions, let me know you're going to have to deliver a stillborn. So when I left the hospital, I, or the doctor's office, I was mad. I was screaming and yelling at God. I went through all this. How can you put me through this? If you can't, if I can't have this baby, you can't have me. Well, like I could take myself out of God's hands, you know? No, I was already saved. I couldn't take myself out, but I was mad. And my mom was with me. When this happened, my husband was hunting. I couldn't even get a hold of him. And so I did get a, finally get a hold of my husband. I decided when I got home, I wasn't going to lose this baby. I was going to fight. I put myself on bed rest. I didn't care if I had to stand on my head. I wasn't going through another loss, you know, and so I did. I went on bed rest and at home, my husband ordered me a hospital bed, which was really humbling for me, but I made it to 24 weeks and then they admitted me to downtown Phoenix high risk uh, pregnancy unit. So I was there up until I delivered, I was, I was on bed rest in Phoenix for eight weeks. And then I made it to eight weeks. They were trying to get me to 35 weeks. I made it to 31 weeks. And then when I delivered at the, well, I woke up one morning at 31 weeks, I was really ill. Uh, I had e contacted E. coli, I was septic. So they rushed me down to C-section and they, you know, I was septic. So they rushed me down, they took the baby, he was septic. So they had to resuscitate him twice. His organs were shutting down and I was in surgery. They didn't think I was gonna make it through the night. They were trying to, you know, I had three surgeons over me. They were trying to pull me through in the meantime, my husband was going back and forth to the NICU where my son was, and they were trying to get me to see him because they told my husband my son wouldn't make it through the night. And my son's doctor wanted me to see him before he had passed away. And so when I came out of surgery, they told my husband, we don't know how she made it because basically she was septic. She was hemorrhaging. I had to have blood transfusions. I had lost a lot of blood and I had, a, you know, they, they nicked my, my um, bladder. So I had to also have bladder surgery. You know, when I came out of the surgery, I had, was on a ventilator up um, downtown Phoenix on like, uh, what do you call it? Intensive care. And then my son, so they finally got me awake enough where I could go see my son. So they wheeled me down in the hospital bed and they said, as soon as I put my hand in to touch him, that his stats started going up and he started improving. And so he, every day that he made it, his every day that he made it, he started improving and his, his rates of surviving got higher, but he was in there 11 weeks and, you know, it was the hardest thing and the, the hardest thing I've ever been through. But, you know, Jesus showed up at the 11th hour. He showed up 
you know, he had mercy on me, he had mercy on my son. And one thing I want to say, am I taking too much time? No, go ahead. Okay. One thing I wanted to say before I, you know, gave this miracle is, and it's really important for me to say this, you know, before this was all happened, you know, this happened 2007, but a few years prior to that, I was saved, but I wasn't living right. In fact, I'm going to be really blunt. I was saved with a drinking problem. Okay. And, you know, I know I'm going to get people that say, well, if you were saved, then you shouldn't have had a drinking problem. Well, when I got saved, the Lord didn't deliver me of my drinking problem. You know, he had his reasons. I think he was more concerned about working out other things in my life than my fleshly habit. Mm -hmm. And he did deliver me. He completely delivered me. But that was years later. Okay. You know, I went through a lot of struggles. Another thing he did discipline me. Yes. God disciplines his children. He did allow consequences, which I'm very thankful for. But, you know, he wasn't over me with a whip disciplining me. He was very patient. I, I kind of, you know, I believe maybe the Lord was ready to take me home when this happened with my son. But I had people, I had believers praying for me and he had mercy on me, you know, and that's, that's the God we have. We have a very gracious, loving grace, grace, grace. I did not deserve the miracle. Okay. And I just want to say, if there's anybody out there that thinks I don't deserve a miracle, I did this wrong. I did that wrong. No, no, it's grace. We don't deserve his grace. And I certainly didn't, but it was all Jesus. And that's important for me to say this because I want to lift Jesus up. You know, I want people to understand it was nothing I did. Nothing I did. Yeah. So I know I probably went on too long, but no, no, it was great. I, uh, I, I'm anxious to respond to it and get everybody's okay. thoughts on before we go to another story from someone else. Uh, I want everybody to have a chance to comment on that. But uh, the thoughts that come to my mind about your account, of course, I heard this uh, before from you uh, in the uh, interview that I did with you. But the uh, yes, um, uh, when you told me that you were not living uh, right and the, those issues, it made me think of those people who um, many times people would come and pray over me when I'm street preaching in the wheelchair, and they they be I uh, have this. Uh, um, uh, doctrine that uh, if yes. you're not healed it's either because you don't have enough faith or there's some yes. sin in your life that you're not willing to give up and uh, that yes. is uh, that's an absolute lie from the devil it's an insult to God thinking that he's not going to um, answer yes. our prayers unless we get our life just right first and your your story uh, reinforces that fact that no you don't have to clean up your life completely and God's going to ignore you until you do. So um, let me ask uh, Renee and Jonathan uh, if they want to have uh, any, if they have any thoughts on, uh, want to re respond to your, uh, your. Yeah. Medical I am so glad that is what you, I mean, the, the story is just miraculous. I mean, God has got plans, you know, <laughs> big plans. And uh, I love that you said, that you couldn't take you out of his hands. Uh, Paul tells us, wow. don't you know you're not your own? You're not your own anymore. And I love that you said, "My, I wasn't living right, but I was saved. Because people think because you get saved that there's some uh, magical thing that forces us to uh, uh, just completely not live in the flesh anymore. But we're told the flesh wars against the spirit. And I love that you went... Uh, you know, the miracle was salvation, but you went to the root. God had something. He knew the drinking wasn't the issue. There was an issue that was causing yes, him to that he needed to heal. And that's why people need to stop judging where people are in the race because they don't know where the starting line is. They need to uh, realize, it. you know, uh, are they a false convert or just a babe in Christ? You know, everybody say, oh, you're a false convert. Yes. If you don't do that. No. 
No, that, that's a matter of spiritual growth, fellowship, and our walk. And I think it's a miraculous thing that what happened through all of that, the fact that you did feel unworthy. First of all, like you said, if you can earn it, it is not grace. If you have, That's why they call it greasy grace, because God just flings his love around to anybody, even if they don't deserve it. Like, and that's why they hate it. But you, your yeah. big miracle beyond the obvious is that he, it, it isn't that he cleaned all that up, is that you grew in grace through all of this. You came to realize yes. that he doesn't leave you, forsake you when you need him the most, when you're at your weakest, when you're in infirmity and weakness in the flesh. That's when his grace hyper, super abounds. When, when sin abounds, grace does not much more diminish. It much more abounds. Yeah. Should we sin more so it does? No, of course not. But that is the big miracle to right. me, is that you now and, know, you know all grace, all grace. Amazing. And exactly. I was a new babe in Christ. I, I needed to be in the word. I wasn't. I didn't grow Born up around more. Christianity. I Yeah. Renewing of your mind is how we transform. And if your mind's not renewed, you yes. don't transform. Yes. Yes. And that you don't is, grow without the true. milk of the word. Yes. Uh, let me yes. remind everybody that I've uh, put the link to join the panel in the in the chat room. If anybody has a miracle account they want to share, uh, you're free to join the panel. Uh, I've posted that link several times now. And uh, someone asked if I could uh, let Minuteban in here. I'm trying to do that right now. So I'll see if it's possible to, for me to multitask and do it. But in the meantime, let me ask uh, Jonathan, uh, let's get your thoughts on uh, Stacy's uh, story there. I almost kind of reminded me of uh, what happened to mom. It was uh, with, uh, uh, she had a miracle with my half brother, uh, Shane. And it kind of reminds me that he kind of, died and had to be resurrected you know re, i mean resuscitated by a nurse or something well and um and god even healed him of blindness um and, and paralysis so it kind of wow. reminds me of that that it happened with uh, your baby and all that so wow mm -hmm. wow <laughs> that's amazing okay uh, i personally have quite a few miraculous accounts that i want to share so uh um, i let everybody get a turn but i've I got so much to, i'm getting some feedback so i guess jonathan you need to mute your microphone that's oh. awesome feedback there yeah good thank you uh i told you about that you know you're if you're new here, you're not used to this uh, muting the mics and unmuting. But uh, okay, let me sell something because my this this particular of one of many miracles I want to share uh, is a brief, but it relates to this childbirth question. And you know, today it's very prominent in the news the subject and issue of abortion. And my, yes. before I was I was a Christian in 1986. I met my wife in 1978. And we liked each other and we shacked up and we ended up getting pregnant. And uh, uh, my attitude, and I guess her attitude at the time too, was uh, abortion was just another form of birth control. We, we right. didn't have any plans on getting married. So we, we agreed that uh, let's, we'll get an abortion. We just got the phone book out in 1979. That's what you added with phone books. And we looked up yes. abortion. And so we scheduled it, went in there. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wow, they had lied to us. We thought it was an abortion clinic, but it was an anti-abortion clinic. And what they had done oh, what they did was yeah. they, uh, they showed us a movie about abortion, and I, it opened my eyes and changed me forever. And, oh. and, uh, and my wife and I, we decided that, no, there's no way we could go ahead. And we, we wanted to have this child, and we couldn't go through the abortion. We got married. We've been married for uh, now it'll be 40 years in August. And our son is 39 and just the greatest blessing in our life. And, and if the, they, they hadn't lied to us, that's a miracle. I mean, it was God. Somehow, that's, that's what I would say. It's, it's like, is a lie ever justified? And that, 
in that case, I thank you, Jesus, that they lied to me and then showed me the truth about abortions. Okay, uh, now it was a short one. I've got a couple more I want to share, but uh, I wanted to, because we're talking about childbirth, I, I thought that one ought to go next. Okay, uh, any any thoughts by uh, Stacy or Renee or Jonathan? Uh, you want to Stacey, respond to that? I wanted to say I'm not going to share like the the miracle of my son. I was almost 40. I just wanted to tell you, uh, I too a preeclampsia and a, um, a placenta previa, and I was Rh yeah. negative, and I was almost 40. And they had to induce labor a month early, and there it was all. He turned out perfect. And I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it at all. I was unmarried. I was uh, still in my addiction, you know, coming out of it, but still had that same old street mentality, you know. So uh, I just want to tell you, I, I understand like the gravity of that. But the, the, the big thing for me is that his grace was so understood by you. That was the miraculous thing to me is that you have gotten revelation of how, how great his grace is and how much it abounds. So it's amazing. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Yes. Praise yes. God. That's amazing. Uh, okay. Uh, now, uh, for those people who asked me to uh, unblock minivan, uh, I, I'm, I'm in over 10 years, uh, I blocked altogether over 500 people and I'm scrolling through the list as I to try to find Miniband to unblock him and it's taken a long time if uh, maybe somebody could post his uh, YouTube link I could go to his channel and unblock him that way but for me to scroll through all the 500 block people to find him it's just too, too, I'm not able to do that but I'm willing to do it if, if someone can put his YouTube channel link up there and then I'll go to it and do it okay Jonathan uh, uh, any response to this, uh, Mike's last story? <laughs> that was pretty neat. Looked like uh, God had different plans for you. <laughs> uh, get you in uh, the anti-abortion clinic. That's a good idea. <laughs> yes. And, and I've, uh, I do have a, an abortion playlist. Uh, and I have a, of a short video giving the account that I just shared, but I also have a, a, a series of videos from... Um, Actually, is a Catholic priest, but he's uh, he actually in graphic details explains the various uh, types of abortion and exactly what it is. And if a person really understands what is happening, a uh, good chance that they're going to change their mind about this whole thing. That was your firstborn, right, Luke? My first and only. Oh, you only have one. Why did I think you had two sons? Okay. Yes. Yes. Well. He, um, okay, uh, and I've got more to share, but now let's let's go next to uh, hey Jonathan, go ahead. Let let's listen to your mir miracle story, please. Okay, this happened to my mom when she was eighteen. This happened in November second, nineteen sixty two, and uh, my my half brother, which was her son, of course, and he was having all kind of problems, and they had to put plates in his head and all that when he was a baby. <laughs> two plates she said yeah. and a shunt and um and they had to do a lot of surgeries and stuff on them but five. they couldn't uh, get them well five. yeah mom said five surgeries on him on yeah she's over here if you want to hear from her <laughs> but um and um what happened with that the doctor sent him home to die and they weren't expecting him to live. He was completely blind, had paralysis, and wasn't expecting to live a day. And yeah, mom said that's when she got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We came from a Pentecostal uh, kind of a background. And, um, and that's when she heard a voice calling her name. And she thought it was her grandmother. And it t turned out that it wasn't her grandmother. And she answered, uh, yes, Lord. And uh, he told her to pray for David. That's uh, Shane's first name. And um, when she got back home, uh, she's kind of reluctant at first, you know. And <laughs> she's kind of scared to to go pray for him like that. She's but 18. she's just 18. And, um, and, and this boy kept telling her to go pray for David. And, uh, and he would heal him. And when she finally did... Um, she didn't know what to say and say, Lord, I don't know what to say. 
and um, it said, uh, put your thumbs in his eyes. Uh, no, wait, that was later. It said, um, uh, she put her hand on him, and uh, the God spoke through her and said, David, thou art healed. And she felt power shoot through her hand, and uh, but he was still blind. And uh, she mentioned that uh, to God, and um, that's when God told her, put your thumbs in his eyes, and she did that. She felt power shoot through her so hard that she thought she poked his eyes out. But when she looked at him, he was his vision was crystal clear, and he had bright blue eyes, as blue as the sky, and uh, he was looked back up at her, and he's no longer paralyzed, and he's still alive today, even though he's been mentally retarded these years and has cerebral palsy, but uh, he's still alive, and <laughs> I remember I grew up hearing that miracle uh, since I was little, so... <laughs> This sounds this sounds like something that, the kind of miracles that I pray for all the time. When I ask Lord heal this person, I say do it in such a dramatic way, no one can deny that this is Jesus that's Christ. Right. And, it, and uh, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, what's your oh, your thoughts? Uh, Melted Zones here with his brother Esteban. Uh, welcome, brother. Uh, let's let Renee go next, but first let's uh, see if anybody. Okay. Wants to respond to this uh, miracle healing of sight. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so dramatic, but I, what I, I'm so glad he explained it like he did because when I I had another miracle, but I was told to pray first. Like he was going to do something for me, but then told me to pray for that. Like it hadn't occurred to me to pray for it until he told me to pray for it. So it was weird. I'm glad he said that. That the Lord told her to pray. I don't know how that works, but I I know that that I I know that's genuine. I've I've had that happen where uh, I was told to pray for something that I wasn't considering at the time, and then it was answered really quickly. Yeah, like uh, I I love that. That is just I love those kinds of miraculous, like spur of the moment healings and i don't see or hear many of them um but i know they exist i know they do but i also know that if you look in the bible sometimes it'll say they prayed for them and then like that same day or that same hour or you know like there is a little bit of time in between sometimes when you see healings in the bible you know it's not always like they do in the movie where you lay hands and then they're healed sometimes it'll say in that very day or the next day they were healed or something well you remember when the i think it was peter he healed this man and he ran and jumped for joy yes he leaping yes. Immediately. And then there's a, another time where he laid hands and he wasn't fully healed and he did it again i forgot which one that was that might have been the old testament but well, in well, one place there was a a healing that took well, uh, that was Jesus doing the man's eyes twice. First, oh, okay. First he could see a little bit, and then he saw clearly. Like the trees, you see. Yeah, trees. I've never, I've, I've always wondered why he didn't get perfect healing the first time, and Jesus did it twice. But I don't know. There may be, uh, maybe some kind of meaning in that. I'll have to. There probably, it. there probably is. Uh, it's just another example of how much I, how little I know. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay, uh, um, Renee. Um, I would like to hear your, I know your miracle count. So maybe if those people haven't heard it, please tell them what happened. Yeah. I, um, hey, Jim, can you plug this up? It's about to die. It's not plugged in for me. You're good now. Um, well, I, I had a, a physical one. You guys know I've been struggling with my um, disability since I uh, was, you know, hurt many years ago. But just this past winter, the pain was so excruciating. I, I, I did not want to live. I, I could the nerve pain. Well, the bones moved off of that. Now let's, let's hope it stays there. That's, I don't, I just know it was an answer to prayer. It wasn't like a miraculous thing that happened overnight, but many people prayed for me and that did happen. But I do have an event that is um, medically no reason for it. And uh, when, uh, after you know, I was hurt. There was, I don't want to get into that, but a couple of guys tried to grab me, abduct me in LA. I was beaten really bad. I have scars, which Lord shippers are so nice to point out. Um, and because of that, 
you can see, I don't know, uh, I lost a third of my arm and uh, uh, my cartilage was eaten out from sepsis. You said you had sepsis. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if you had this, but I had audio hallucinations because I was so septic that I would wah, 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 like that and severe migraines in the muscles and skin were actually jumping off my bones. Mm -hmm. And um, I was so sick because they wouldn't believe me. They thought I was lying to get drugs. They couldn't find mm -hmm. me. So by the time they did the MRI, they, they tested me again and found that I had no kidney function, zero. The infection had just, my body just had quit it. I can't even function. I've got to fight this because I was going to die. And I was septic. They told me to, you know, make preparations. My son was only a year old because the MRSA stays in your bloodstream for two years. Right. And so it, it was bad. It ate my bones. And that's what left me uh, disabled. And uh, my father had throat cancer. He has a stoma in his neck. And at the same time, his wife was dying. She had no kidneys because she had, had cancer of the kidneys twice and they weren't going to give her a kidney transplant. And so my dad suffered with that, watching her die. And I asked God, if you want to take my life, I, I mean, I, I want to be here with my son. But if yeah. you want me to go, I, I'll do, even though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Right. So, but I said to die this way would destroy my father. The kidney, he just saw her die this way. Please don't let me die of kidney failure that long, drawn out that my father, it was literally for my dad. It wasn't even for my own life to be safe. Right. I couldn't stand right. see And so I was in my hotel uh, hospital room, and this gentleman calls me about three o'clock in the morning. And he keeps asking for his mother. And I said, I'm so sorry. Um, there's no one here. It's just me. And uh, he did it like three times. And he said he was so impressed that I wasn't mean to him because he kept calling my room. And the next day, him and another gentleman whom I've never met come into my room. They have some healing scriptures handwritten. Uh, it was like child's writing. I just thought it was so sweet because it was like kind of sloppy like a kid. And uh, it was just heartwarming to me for some reason that they took time instead of typing, they wrote it. And they came, uh, two, two guys I never met before came and prayed over me in my bed. And um, the uh, dialysis was scheduled to begin my dialysis uh, because as I said, zero kidney function, none. Uh, it was so bad I could taste ammonia in my mouth. I was breathing ammonia and my urine was clear like water. Mm. It wasn't even filtering anything. It was just clear. You mm. would think it'd be dark. It's not, it's not filtering mm. anything. Mm. And so, uh, they scheduled it. It was about two or three hours before my dialysis. And you know, they have to check your blood every few hours, especially when you're septic, they have yes. to check in your levels. And they said, wait a minute, she has kidney function. So it ended, I had no function. And then I, I think you're supposed to, I forgot what the cre, creatine or something, creatine, is that it? You're supposed to have eight and I had zero and then it went to two to four to six and to eight. And I had full kidney function uh, by the next day. <laughs> full kidney function. Just did not have to go to dialysis. I'm talking down to the wire. It was like hours before my dialysis. And once the dialysis starts, the kidneys aren't going to work again. You know, it's got a uh, artificial thing, but uh, I'll tell my other little one uh, when I'm done, but that's my uh, physical healing. That was pretty dramatic. Uh, and I, I didn't feel anything. Oh. It just, I, they just started working. They just started working. Um, one of my viewers had wanted me to tell you her father was a, a, a hockey player for the NHL and he got so severely depressed. He committed suicide. He shot himself right in the head. He mm -hmm. did not die. Not only did he not die, he woke up with full function and no brain damage. Wow. The prayers. And he oh. got saved too. He got saved. Uh, so I just want to tell you that. Wonderful. I uh, I just want to respond to the chat room for a minute. We got uh, 
sister Flora, a lily girl, is going to join. Oh, she did join. She did join. Okay. And uh, Sister Lisa Harang from For the Most High Jesus, uh, yeah. she's going to join us if she can make the link work. So hopefully she'll be able to join us too. And, and I will uh, tell my financial one later. It was a need that I had that could only come from God. It was not. Let's, let's, let's see the, the people's reaction, uh, response to your your, your miracle. Yeah, of course. You. Uh, let, whoever wants to respond, go ahead. Well, I, I you know, I, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. It really is. I just want to say, you know, the night before I woke up and I, I found out I was septic. Get a little bit closer to your microphone. Death. The night be okay. Yeah, the night you. before, I first of all, Renee, it's it's amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. I am just almost in tears. The night before I was septic, before I I I had this dream. Okay, I had this dream. Saddam Hussein was in my bed. Okay, this was 12 years ago. He was in my bed and I said, get out of my bed in my dream. I said, get out of my bed. I woke up the next day. I knew I was in trouble. Wow. I knew and I was sick. I knew I was facing death and I pleaded with God. I said, I cannot leave my six-year-old daughter. There's nobody to take care of her. Lord, please. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And, but, you know, I just want to say, you know, I believe, you know, the Lord already knew what was going to happen. He knew he had it. He had me, but it was a spiritual battle. You know, I love brother Stephen. We are at war. Yes. We are Amen. In a spiritual battle. Amen. You know, this is serious. The, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, I want to stand up for the new Christians and the new babes. You need to be in the word. You know, it's transform, transform your mind. You don't conform to the world. How do you transform your mind? You transform your mind by the word of God. The Amen. word of God sharper than a two-edged sword you know i i wish i'd realized that i was saved i was saved but then i had the enemy coming in causing condemnation telling me really does god love you does jesus love you you're a loser you're not saved he doesn't love right. you why would you go through all this mm -hmm. you know but it, i take responsibility i should have been in the word but I wasn't. But so that's what I just want to say. If you're a new believer. You you know, the enemy's going to put doubt. Does it mean you're not saved if you have doubt? No. We have to understand everybody comes from different backgrounds. And not everybody's raised around scripture or, you know, in the church, which there are people in the church that aren't saved. Well, but there's a lot of enemies within the church that are coming true. against our that's blessed true. insurance. You know, I, and Renee, and you really helped me. I want to, I'm just, oh, I, I mean, I'm so thankful. I, when I started understanding grace, how much Jesus loved me, that's when he set me free from alcohol. Amen. Amen. Freedom. I have no desire. In fact, I can have a glass of red wine. I'm done. I don't no need another one. Yeah. I have no desire whatsoever. Right, this then is the wall. Hey, yes. uh, Stacy, yes. uh, I watched. Uh, Stacy, I watched a video today by Brother Dave, and I commented, "It's awesome preaching. I just loved what he his message, but it was powerful preaching." And I'm listening yes. to you. I'm thinking, hey, I have a sister here that's preaching to us. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thank Steve, you. Steve's thank just joined you. us. But the one that's been waiting the longest so far is um, uh, Lily Girl One. I'm glad you can get make it work and join us. Got the kids put away, but uh, Esteban, uh, I guess you're next up. Esteban, uh, you want to give us any uh, thoughts on what you've been listening to, and then if you have a miracle to share, please do it. It was awesome hearing everybody, uh, especially Renee. I mean, she, wow. Um, Yes. Praise God for all this, man. Like, cause without him, I don't hear anything. Is he talking? You hear me? 
Yeah, he's talking. So I, you can't hear him. You're going to have to leave and come back like you're, you know, that's your routine, I guess. Okay. Yeah, Renee was um, Esteban. Renee said she couldn't hear you, so she has to leave and come back. Okay, go ahead, Esteban. Uh, praise, like I said, praise God for all this because without. Uh, but Esteban, I'm, I don't know if anybody else is having the problem, but your your audio was a little low, so get a little closer to your microphone or something. Okay, hold I on. I can hear him. Let's get, let me get my headphones. I can hear him. Yeah. Where can I? Yeah. All right, can you guys hear me now? I can. Yeah, that was real good. Real good. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, praise God. I was saying um, because, like, without him, we would we wouldn't be here. Um, you know, and and it was awesome to hear about Sister Renee. To hear about um, Stacy. Right? Yes. Your name? Yes. Okay. Making sure. Making yes. sure. Okay. <laughs> it was awesome to hear about Jonathan. Everybody. It was. It's so. It's a blessing to hear about this because we. We need to hear this to edify the body. Yes. You know, I, it really helps. Um, and what I was going to say is I went through some trouble times, you know, when I was a teenager. And I was doing, I was dabbling into drugs. Um, I was smoking weed with somebody, but they didn't tell me that they laced it with something. Hmm. Um, I was young, you know, I was like 18, barely out of high school. Um, so I had no idea what was going on. And I don't remember how I got home. Um, I just remember thinking I was in, a, in another dimension. I don't know. It was weird. Mm -hmm. It was a weird thing. Um, but somehow I ended up home. And my apparently my grandparents at the time, they were like yelling at me. And all I can remember is laughing, they said. They said that they heard me laughing all the time at them. And, and I don't remember any of that. Um, everything, I felt like I missed a whole day. Like I missed a whole span of a day because I was doing this stuff and it wasn't good. And I don't know how, like I said, it was, I think it was only God's grace that could have got me home because really, I don't know how I came home in one piece. I don't remember anything. Yes. And, and you know, um, there was also a good one too, where my, <laughs> I ended up with triplets <laughs> And um, uh, Allery, uh, she um, she has a heart issue, so they they had a pinched uh, valve, and I was freaking out because she she was premature, and um, I have a heart I have a heart issue, so I have like two leaky valves and a heart murmur, so um, yeah, um, they. They said they had to do a surgery on her. They they uh, put this thing in there to open up the valve. And thank God she's doing great now. She doesn't even need to be on medication anymore. So it, it was amazing to see that because now she's able to run. She's she plays. You know, I, I get to I get to spend more time with her. And um, it's all God. It wasn't. Anything that, you know, I mean, the doctors have a little to do with it, but the rest is in God's hands. Praise God. So um, there's that. And uh, it's even a miracle that I'm still talking right now because apparently the doctor said I needed to come in and I don't know what's going on. So uh, that's all I have to say. Awesome. Praise Jesus. I tell you, I still made this point in the beginning, but. These, uh, you know, we're all believers, but, uh, um, and, and, you know, we, we believe. I, it, I don't know how much it took for everybody to believe, but it wasn't hard for me to believe at all. Uh, but I'll tell you, these miracles have strengthened my faith over the years. All these experiences, not just mine, but I listen to everybody else. See, we, we have, uh, we're a theist. We're not deists. Deism is believing that there's some creative energy force the created thing, but it's not involved. It's not personal and it's not involved. But in theism, it's a God that's a person and he, and God is involved with his creation. Hey, he's still, man. He's still participating and he's still answering our prayers and giving us miracles. And uh, we were adopted but, into his family. 
So, uh, okay, yes. uh, well, let's go with Lily Girl. Uh, Lily Girl, give us your thoughts on Esteban and every, anybody else you've listened to, whatever you would like to say. And then I know you're a miracle. When I interviewed you, I was blown away. So go ahead, sister. Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. Um, you know, that, hi, yeah. Oh, hi, Stacy. Hi, Renee. Hi, Esteban. Hi, Steve. Hi, Luke. Who else is there? I don't know. Sweet girl. I'm sorry. I think Hi, I don't know um, the other person's name. I'm sorry, I came in late. Um, I had to put the kids to bed, but um, I'm hiding underneath the blanket. <laughs> but, <laughs> but listen, praise I God, you know, everything is, everything is awesome. I'm just so glad that God performed all these miracles in all of our lives. You know, if it was just to strengthen our faith or if it was just to, um, you know, help us in our time of need. You know, God is always there for everyone, even those that um, don't don't seek him. Um, you know, he's there for. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I just wanted to say that my life is a miracle. I wake up every day and I count my blessings. Before I do anything or step off my bed, I just say, thank you, Lord. I'm alive. I'm alive. Wow. Amen. And I say, thank you. Jordan's alive. Jaden's alive. Justin's alive. Jeremiah's alive. Josiah's alive. Did I get everyone? Ryan's alive. Everyone's alive. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, you know, that's to me is like a miracle because so many people are suffering. So many people are sick. So many people, you know, they're just not well, they're not happy and they're miserable, but I can say that at least I have breath. And as long as I'm alive and I have Christ, I'm good. Amen. Amen. So um, my miracle, wow, there's a lot, but I'm just going to say one. Maybe I'll just say one. Um, it was when, I think it was in 2000, when was it? 2012 when I began my application for um, my marriage visa to come to the U.S., um, cause my husband wanted to move here and come work here. So we put in the application, everything was good. And then, um, a l one of the things you have to do in the application, um, is you have to go to go, um, do some tests. So they have to make sure like you're clean enough <laughs> you have to make sure you're clean enough and don't have any diseases that you're bringing to the United States. So, um, when I went to one of the exams, um, I did this test and it was like a TB test. That was like one of the first tests. It was a TB test, right? So you spit in a thing and they test it if you have TB, blah, blah, blah. So um, I didn't have TB, thank God. I'm just going to skip that bit. And then I did like a, a chest x-ray and it was in that x-ray that they discovered that I had um, cancer. Like they could see um, cancer on my lung. So I was really confused, like, Imagine just, anyway, it was just really, really confused because I was like, what, cancer? How can I have cancer? Anyway, so I went into this, like, weird depression thing because they, all they were doing was doing the test. They can't, like, cure me. So um, every, that kind of, like, stopped all my application and all that stuff. It just froze because I had to figure out what I'm going to do. And then I found out I was pregnant. So I have cancer, apparently, and I'm pregnant. So it's like I would have to choose if I wanted to do chemotherapy between my child and the cancer that's growing. And that if you know anything about the NHS, they'll wait till you're almost dying before they um, help you. So um, it was really, really, really bad. But one day after crying for hours in the blanket, not knowing what I was going to do, um, I feel like maybe this was God. Uh, I know I was saved at the time. I just wasn't like super like in my Bible or anything. But um, I just, I felt like I heard someone, I don't know, I guess it was God um, telling me, look for a private doctor, go to a private doctor and go and get, you know, go get you a test there, you know. So after waiting for three months on the NHS to get me an appointment, which they didn't do, um, I ended up just going to this other doctor in London Bridge. Uh, I need to look up the information, but it's on. It's in London Bridge. It's across the street from London Bridge train station. I know exactly where it is. So I went to the place. 
um, after calling um, the doctor on the the doctor's office on the phone, went there. Everything was booked really quickly because if you're paying for your own stuff, they can see they don't care. If you're paying for your own stuff, everybody will see you quickly. Money speaks. Yeah. So <laughs> I go to the place and um, I explained everything to the doctor. I gave him the x-ray, the, the CD of the x-ray that showed the cancer and all that stuff. So I, I was basically trying to get a second opinion. And he looked at it and he, and he knows that hospital is very valid. I mean for the united states citizenship so he, he said yeah um it's definitely there and i told him i was pregnant as well he was like okay it's, it's gonna be difficult but um he wanted to he was he wanted to put something down my throat to go down and look at it with like a little camera or something like that but he said that but first just go downstairs and we'll have our x-ray here because he wanted his own x-ray as well but he's already seen it and he already knew that i had it so when I go downstairs in the x-ray hall, I'm waiting. It was like the longest 10 minutes of my life because I was standing there and I was just like, <sighs> I had heard my mom pray certain prayers before. So I I knew how to pray, but it's like somebody that doesn't really know how to pray. I don't know how to explain that. Mm -hmm. So, but when I was standing there, I said, you know what, God, if you're real and you want me to serve you, when I go into this x-ray room, I don't want to see any cancer. If there's no cancer, then I will serve you because that means you're real. But if there's no cancer, if there is cancer, then don't worry about it. I'm just going to die. You know, it doesn't matter because obviously you're not real. <laughs> that, was the, <laughs> that was the kind of flippant kind of prayer. But I really did have faith deep down that if I would just say it and pray that, like that he would do it. I don't know. I just felt like it at the same time. So I went inside, did the whole x-ray thing, um, go back upstairs. I'm waiting for the results um, with the doctor. And then he, uh, well, I'm waiting. And then he's not in his office. I waited there for like 20 minutes. Then he finally comes back into his office. And then I go inside the office because I was waiting in the waiting room. I go inside the office. I'm sitting down. He says, okay, Miss Fun, now I'm going to check here, blah, blah, blah. So he goes in, looks on the information and pulls up my stuff through his computer and he turns the screen around and he says, um, he says, um, Flora, or he says, Miss Fontenot, um, whatever God you're serving, whatever God, I can't be, those are his words. He's like, he's an Indian. So he's like, whoever God it is that you're serving, you need to get up and praise him right now. And I was what? like, what do you mean? Why? What happened? What? He was like, you don't have cancer. It's disappeared. I was like, what? Huh? <laughs> it was like, it's disappeared. I was like, oh my God, Jesus, this is real? <laughs> because I remembered like the prayer that I did. So I was like so shocked. I was like, oh my God, Jesus is real. Jesus is real. I said, I even said to him, I said, oh, it's it's like a miracle. He said, it's not like a miracle. It is a miracle. I was like, praise God. <laughs> so, um, oh, that was the um, one of the miracles that happened to me. And my husband was so happy because he told me before that day, and he's like really, really not religious. Like he's really not. He's one of those Christians that you would be like, is he a Christian? <laughs> if you were judgmental Pharisee, like I used to be. Um, but <laughs> he he was like, he told me one time, he said, Laura, you you don't have cancer. And I was like, Yes, Ryan, I do. They said I do. He was like, Laura, you can't have cancer when you have Jesus. You don't. Cancer and Jesus don't go together. You have Jesus. I was like, oh, be quiet. You're just saying that because you're not the one dying. <laughs> I had no faith. <laughs> but, you know, thank God that it's not necessarily how hard we believe but how faithful our god is amen man praise jesus all glory to our great savior god jesus yeah. wonderful i've heard that again I, I interviewed sister flora and i know this story i know she's got more and i want to hear the other miracles i've got a bunch of miracles to share but i want everybody i to for one am glad to turn yeah aren't you glad luke that the Lord mm -hmm. answered that prayer and that she decided, yep, I got to serve him because I would have oh, never yeah. met her. Yeah. I would have never. Yeah, yeah, Sister Flora, a wonderful blessing in the congregation. And yes. uh, by the way, uh, while I'm thinking of it, um, uh, in the chat room, we have um, 
a sister Lisa Harang. Uh, her channel is For the Most High Jesus. Uh, she's trying to make get that link and make it work. But if you don't know uh, Lisa uh, For the Most High Jesus, go to her channel and subscribe. But she's one of the best preachers I know. I'm serious. This is a woman preaching, and she's a powerful preacher. And I hope you'll check her channel out. I just love her. And uh, okay. So um, let me see, uh, I guess anybody wants to respond to anything, go ahead. Otherwise, we'll go with uh, Steve next, he, next in line. Hello, Steve. Hello. I thought you fell asleep for a second. Oh, Sister Lisa is here with us. Awesome. Hey. Hey, bro. To... Hey, where is she? Where, let me see. There she is. Sister Lisa, I don't know if you want to turn your camera on or not. You don't have to. But do you want to say hi to everybody before we uh, listen to Steve's uh, testimony of his miracle? I'm Let me know. Just speak up if, you, if you're ready. Uh, all right. Okay. Well, I'll let you go whenever you're ready. But uh, Steve, go ahead, brother. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, you might have to come back to me. I'm waiting to deliver uh, some stuff, but uh, the, the, the main thing uh, that I wanted to, to, to share, I have lots of stories I could share, but that this show tonight is a, uh, is a miracle itself. You know, I saw in the uh, chat room that uh, it, someone said that it was an answer to prayer. Uh, I guess brother Mark was, uh, has been praying for this kind of a program, I guess. As far as I, I'm not aware of it, but I'm happy that uh, we're able to do it. And uh, uh, okay, Steve, we'll get back to you then when you're free. I know you're you're multitasking this and and your work. So um, let me, uh, Sister Lisa, uh, if yeah, you can, can hear, hear me. Okay? And, yeah, yeah, please. Um, why don't you tell people who who you are? Because uh, some people here we don't know you. you and uh, and then give us your uh, your story, please. Uh, praise the Lord, Brother Luke, and uh, praise the Lord to everyone out there who's listening. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to begin. Uh, I'm just a servant of King Jesus. I put up the channel name for the Most High Jesus because I just got so thoroughly irritated by people contra uh, constantly uh, blaspheming Jesus, saying he wasn't God and, you know, things of that nature. So I just wanted to put it out there and just irritate the schniz a lot of people by having it right up front. I got started on YouTube because I wanted to share my testimony uh, with other believers who I saw being injured by the religious zealots in the church with Lordship Damnation mm -hmm. and how many people were being harmed, lives literally being destroyed mm -hmm. by that false doctrine people trying to pursue perfection, mm -hmm. which will never come save for the transformation that happens through the word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. And when I saw this happening, I just couldn't be quiet anymore. I had to speak up. Mm -hmm. And that's what the channel really began with. And I just wanted to be a blessing to people and let them know that their works had nothing to do with salvation. As far as that being the catalyst by which you were propelled into the presence of God. It was utter nonsense for people to teach such garbage. Mm. Um, and as, as I heard someone saying, earlier in their testimony this evening mm -hmm. that they had the belief that you had to be what it is you thought or people thought you should be before you could receive anything from the Lord. 
And I knew that was nonsense when I would look at the scripture and see Jesus healed people without any conditions placed upon them prior to healing them. For example, with even the person he told go and sin no more, he healed them first. And that was an admonishment after the fact, because that's what we believe as believers are called to do. We should do good works. We should abstain from those things that will hinder us or so easily beset us or destroy our testimony before the world or hinder us in our faith in Christ. But people were ascribing things to Christ that were not at all his character and nature. And as a result, people were believing in a false Christ and they weren't receiving healing and they weren't receiving deliverance and they weren't receiving the anointing and the power of God in their lives because they were believing on a false Jesus. And it's so simple that a five-year-old can understand it, but these people complicate the gospel of grace with their religious traditions. And all it is is a modern day form of Phariseeicalism. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> take over your your, your uh, broadcast here, but, but that's how I got started. Well, now everybody knows where, where you're coming from, sister, and what your uh, ministry is all about. So I'm so happy to have a chance to meet you now. And now I know you've got a miracle to share. Yes, that's why uh, it's it's really funny because I'm sure you've all had the same experience. You all have the same Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of you. The Lord will touch you about something and within two or three days or a week or a month, everybody else you know who's born again is on the same track or they're approaching that track and they say, well, I want to run this by you because I'm thinking about this. I was going to start posting testimonies that had happened to me in my life. And I actually recorded one about three days ago, but the devil is blocking me from putting it up. I've been having all kinds of problems just trying to get it up. So I said, I'll just chime in and share it with you right now. Um, years ago, I was on my way after work. I had worked the night shift. Uh, I was tired. I was getting off. It was like pre-dawn right around five o'clock in the morning. And out here in California, we have a freeway that's very well known freeway called the 10 freeway or the Santa Monica freeway. And I was headed from the Inland Empire to Los Angeles. So I was traveling from the east to the west. And on that freeway is an infamous S-curve. OK, and you really don't want to hit that curve going about more than 40 or 50 miles an hour, because if you're not really holding on that stern wheel, you're going to be in somebody else's lane very easily. And it can cause a major accident and has numerous times throughout the years. Well, I was traveling and I was very sleepy. I was cognizant of the fact that I was sleepy, but I was on my way to the hospital to visit a loved one who was very ill. And I'm trying to make it there. I'm debating on whether I should pull over and get a nap. But then I'm like, no, I don't want to miss anything. I want to be there. I had family expecting me. So I tried to tough it out. And as I continued on, I'm coming into this S curve and I feel myself literally slipping away. Like when you are just going to go to sleep because you're so tired and you can't keep your eyes open and you just drift off no matter how much you fight it. And here I'm coming into this S curve and I just black out. Boom. I'm gone. And I, I knew mentally, I'm like, no, you got to stay awake. Gone, passed out. Mm. I have my hands on the stern wheel at 10 and 2 o'clock. And I slipped out 
went, everything went black. And I feel the steering wheel turn right, then left, then right again and straighten up coming out of this curve. And it startled me and I woke up. And I'm looking back and I see that I went through that curve and I'm like, what just happened? I literally felt that stern will turn. Wow. And so I started thanking oh, Jesus. Jesus because I knew an angel took that wheel. Yeah. And I, I was literally astonished. I was quiet other than praising him all the way to my destination because it really shocked me. And like I said, if we had to go by what we've done right or what we've done wrong to ever receive a miracle from God, none of us ever would. Because I'm not going to promise you I had done the best I had ever done in my life to receive that miracle at that moment. That's utter nonsense. Right. It's because I'm a child of the king. <laughs> you all listening to me, if you're born again, you're a child of the king of mm -hmm. kings and the Lord of lords. And he loves you. And his only desire is to give good gifts to you. Woo! Thank you. Sorry, I had, I had to scream out amen. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, Sister Renee. I don't mind at all. All praises to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm giving yes, this sir. testimony yes, before yes, all of you as witnesses mm -hmm. and under the Holy Spirit, as the scriptures say, I lie not. That is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. You just heard it, Sister Lisa. For the most high Jesus, I am so happy to hear with us tonight, Sister. Um, you know, uh, there's the joy, Luke. There's yeah, the joy. That's yeah, what every joy, there's the joy talks about. Daily. She's for joy. She knows she's got peace and joy. Sure. That okay. is the fruit of the spirit, mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I want everybody to get a turn here. Uh, Mark's here, case over, and uh, we still got Steve. Uh, but um, I'm going to respond next to another one just because. When I hear a story about Stacy and that childbirth, and I say, "Well, I got to talk about the childbirth, my miraculous son that saved was saved from the abortion," and now she tells me about this miracle, and I got to share one that's similar about ten and two. So I've got several street preaching miracles to tell you, but I'll keep this pretty short. I preached more than a thousand times here on Sin City and Las Vegas Boulevard. And one day I'm preaching in this, uh, for some reason, I mean, every once in a while someone will want to come up and pray for me because I'm preaching in a wheelchair. And by the way, I don't need a wheelchair anymore, but back then I needed a wheelchair. Uh, that's another reason. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not in the wheelchair anymore. But <laughs> I'm preaching in the wheelchair, so sometimes people want to pray for me, and it wasn't unusual. Well, this day, one person after another after another came up to pray for me and then finally a whole bunch of people like 10 or more people came up gathered around they all wanted to pray for me i said this is crazy what's going on here <laughs> i never had so many people praying for me and they said well we're here for a prayer convention you know <laughs> we're all uh you know we're, we want to have a convention here in las vegas for the church of the eternally secure and everybody to come here and we're going to do that sometime this year i think but but these people came to Las Vegas for a prayer convention, and they saw me, and they're all praying for me. And they also know that I'm a street preacher, and you're under spiritual attack and sometimes physical attack. So they're laying hands on me, pray. And this one guy said, put a hedge of protection around this brother. Protect him from uh, any, any harm. Well, I was thankful for the prayers. And when I was done doing my preaching, I, I, uh, my partner, Frank, and I, we, we, did, we leave, and uh, he drives away in his car, and I get on the freeway, and I'm thinking, uh, well, oh boy, this is a freeway is really, really hectic today. I better really pay attention. I'm going about 70 miles an hour, so I say, I'm 10 and 2, just like Lisa. I'm 10 and 2. I'm paying close attention because I'm thinking, boy, this is uh, busier than usual, but it's moving really fast. Well, suddenly, 
it's like there's a red light. There's no red light, but the, there was a complete stop and there was no warning. And suddenly I had to like slam on my brakes and stop as fast as I could to avoid running into the car in front of me. I stopped only a few feet away. And then I thought, what? Maybe there's a car coming behind me. There's not stopping. This instantly came to my head. I immediately turned into the right lane. And just as I pulled out of that lane, the car came behind me full 70 miles an hour and ran into the car in, that was in front of me. And I was in a small convertible and I, I would have been killed. And there was no question I would have been killed that day. And I believe all the prayers that I got that day protected me and made me aware yeah. of danger. And to, I knew I needed to get out of the way. All right. I got more to share, but that's all right. Uh, now, brother Mark, uh, um, wow. uh, someone told me that you're uh, you have been praying for a, a, a program like this, so I'm happy you're you're you must be happy. Tell us what's going on. Um, thank you, by the way, for having me. Um, yeah, actually, I, uh, I, I earlier today. I asked for this exact thing and <laughs> so this is my miracle. It's happening right now. Um, with all the strife and contention in the body that's been going around. Um, I thought this was very needed and lo and behold, God is good and always ahead of us. Yes. Amen. Amen. I mean, I, I could give you tons of miracles, but honestly, that is the most miraculous, most recent miraculous thing was literally earlier saying, we need a, a place where we just, you know, praise God and thank him for what he does and share in the joy and, and, I get a text that says, hey, you probably want to come to this stream. They're doing exactly what you asked for. So God was ahead of me and and has blessed me with all of you. Yeah. Well, I, I think we all say amen. This is a yes. lot better than arguing in the church. So Amen. Yeah. We're all amen. unified and thanking Jesus. He is real, and he is uh, with us, and, and, and he loves us, and he's answering our prayers. So, um, okay, uh, um, Steve, if you're, uh, if you're finished with your work, you'll feel free to uh, talk anytime you want. Uh, otherwise, let me get uh, any uh, feedback from anybody. Uh, if anybody has another miracle account that they want to share, go ahead. Uh, but otherwise, let's just give me, give me your feedback from what you've been hearing. I, uh, well, I had that one, like a, a need field I'll tell you about. But I just want to say, I, I think that we will all agree that the greatest miracle is that God adopted us into his family. Yeah. He's, he has sent his son, God in the flesh, to bear the sin of myself. And every person in the world, that's the love he had for us. And it's so sad that that's been minimized. I don't know what they think Jesus accomplished if he didn't save us. But uh, the greatest miracle is that I was dead. I was dead. And then once I left this body, I was going to suffer the second death. Mm -hmm. But God gave me a rebirth. My spirit became alive in Christ. And then one day he's going to give me a body just like Jesus's body. Yes. And, and and this is forever. I mean, that is the greatest miracle that we were dead and we're alive forever more. And the devil does not want us to know the joy and the liberty we have in Christ. He wants to put us in bondage and fear. One little gentleman was saying, do I have to confess every time? Honey, if you confess sins all day, you do nothing else. That we, Our flesh fails constantly. Mm -hmm. You know, a, our yeah, sins so were forgiven. And that is the greatest miracle that we can come. Do you remember in the Old Testament what they had to do to come into the presence of the living God? Mm -hmm. How strict those things were. Now we can come boldly to the throne of grace. 
That's a miracle. We can come right to our God for help in a time of need. We can speak directly to him knowing he hears our prayers. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's awesome. It's true. (laughs) And the truth is, if you continuously are focused on your sin, then uh, you're not focusing on Christ. Hold on, you are focusing on Christ. No. That's right. And, <clears throat> I know. It ever, makes ever. you sin more. It makes you sin more. Because yes. you're sitting there watching, oh, oh, I did this, oh, I did this, oh, am I going to hell? Like, mm-hmm. what kind of life is that? Me, That's me. no life. And I'm saying it from a person that has been there, done that. Yes. And it was no life. And I will never go back because I know in whom I believe and he will not forsake me and he will not leave me because he's a good God. Yes. And once you're free like that, girl, nobody can again tell you what you know. That's right. It bears witness in us that we are the children of God. That's right. right. Nobody's going to tell me that I can lose it if I act up. Right. You, you know, while we're on this, uh, I wanted to say I, I used to, um, before I was saved, I, I used to think if I did something wrong, if I if I looked at a woman wrong, because I've heard from so many people that I was going to lose my salvation, uh-huh. that God would, and, and, you know, I look back at it and I go, how foolish was I? Mm-hmm. Because God is stronger than me, than any human. He created us. That's right. And for you to tell somebody that you can jump out of his hand is blasphemy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like they have a God that cannot save, brother. They have a God that is not mighty to it's save. It's lying, yeah. It is because they're lying against the word of God. They can yeah. read it and they will say the opposite of it. I don't understand yeah. that. Yeah. It says, I, nobody can pluck you out of my hand. No man can pluck you out of that. And they're like, but That's you right. can pluck yourself. Like, dude, nothing we are men. Me. We are nothing, human. Nothing we can't way. pluck ourselves out of God's hand. Uh, after, I had right. my, after I had my miracle, it took me years to process what had happened. Because wow. I couldn't understand why God would give me a miracle when I wasn't living right. Uh There you go. I couldn't understand because I was listening to wrong Mm -hmm. preachers. I was, you know. As if we can be good enough to deserve anything. Exactly. That's right. Never been good enough to deserve it. Exactly. Never. Even after I told God I was going to serve him, did I serve him right after that? Nope. I but carried on right after that. Girl. I was still living how I wanted to live. And guess what? When my son, when my son, let me be quiet because my husband doesn't like hearing this story. But when I, when I was giving birth to my second child in the hospital, he was born, still born. Oh. And... Oh. And, 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 and I was like so drowsy, I couldn't tell. And I, I was looking around, they were like, is he alive? Is he okay? I, I kept saying, is he okay? Is he okay? And the nurses were nodding no. And my husband was like, no, everything's fine. Because he didn't want me to like go crazy or anything. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, is he okay? Is he okay? And, you know, all of a sudden, he woke up. I don't know. They just woke him up. He was dead. He was not. He was dead for like 10 minutes. They woke him up. And then he was having seizures. Like, okay, so they gave him to me. You know how they give you the baby and they go away. You know, but I had had a child before. So I know how children behave. So when he was acting kind of funny after a few hours, like because of the lack of oxygen, he was having seizures. And I was like, this isn't right. He looks like he's in pain. It's not regular pains like how a baby cries. It's like pain, you know? So I was like, oh my God, you know, like something's wrong. So when I came to the hospital, they came into the room. I said, something is wrong with my baby. I think something's wrong. So they took him away and they found out it was seizures. And I was like, oh my God. So the doctor came in and he was like, he was like, oh, um, you know, he is having seizures. We're going to have to take him to blah, blah, blah hospital and blah, blah. And I was, I had the peace of God. 
And I didn't understand it because I'd never read my Bible. Like, I didn't know what that was, but I had the peace of God. Because when things come against me, I know you've, you might have heard this before, Stacey. When things come against me, I just have this weird calm come over me. Like, I don't understand it. So I was, like, so calm. And the doctor thought I was mad. Like, he thought something was wrong with me. He was like, are you okay? They think okay? you don't understand. They think you don't yeah, understand. they think I don't understand, but I understood. So I was like, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I'll sign everything. So I signed everything. As soon as they left the room, I ran into the bathroom. I made sure everybody was gone because I don't like to face my issue in public. Right. I locked that door. I got on my knees. I said, Jesus, you are the one that gives life. You gave me this child. Father, please let the first medicine they give him, let it be the cure. Let it be the cure, the first medicine. And when they gave him the medicine, that was the cure. So I praise God. Because after he took those medicines, he was off it by the time he was one. And we didn't even go back. Because my husband is is very, he's a scaredy cat. So (laughs) that was it. (laughs) We have that view of our father. I'm a mother and I am flawed. And my son would never have to do anything for me to give to him or to love him or to forgive. He doesn't have to do anything for me to shower him with love. But we think our God loves less. Right. It's right right there in the book. Right. Right. The other if night, you then oh, being can I evil, respond real quick to that. I have five children, they're all different. I have to discipline them all different. My first child, he was 16, I kicked him out of the house because of drug use. Okay, I still loved him, but I had to have him leave. He was disrupting the house. Years later, he wanted to come back. Did I say no? No, I, I opened him back with welcome arms. I said, I love you. I've always loved you. You know, we're God's children. He doesn't kick us out because we're right. doing something wrong. He doesn't disown he us. He wants the best for us. Yes. He just wants yes. the best for us. And he knows that sin destroys. It's an yes. open door to self-destruction. Yes. Uh, but That's right. I, it still I, leads to death. Yes. The other night on a video, uh, a movie that it was a Catholic, uh, most of the movies are Catholic based, but this one Catholic uh, prince from the time of Queen of Scots, mm-hmm. he says, well, I forgive these kinds of things, but God won't or something like that. Like he was more merciful uh, wow. than, God, than God was. That and that's how people see it. Well, I'd be willing, you know, uh, there's there's a lot of uh, the thing with the homosexual issue. People are like, well, I'll love them and I'll be, but God, no, He won't for He won't let. I'm like, what? You're more gracious and merciful and forgiving than God Almighty? But that's how they see our God. That's how they see Him. Yeah. We have to. I'd like to speak to that for a second, if I could. Sure. And, and and that is on the homosexual issue. I think a lot of people get tied up with that because they believe a lot of that is somebody possibly being demon possessed. And that may be the case to an extent, depends on whether or not they're born again, because then that's external. They're wearing something like a garment. It can't come from within. Right. Yes. But they get tripped up by that. and. I'm always puzzled by it because the Bible is clear that, we, for example, anything that's not faith is sin. They don't that's sit right. back yeah. and berate people from the pulpit because they don't have faith or we all great still faith. Sin. We exactly. all still sin. If they have to stop their sin to be saved, then they have to stop all sin. Not just exactly. that. And that means we have to stop it all. And now we're earning our own righteousness instead of the imputed righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. That's correct. But also what I wanted to get to was the same way we don't see somebody that has a broken leg or a broken heart or a broken spirit as necessarily being sinful. Why do we do that to the person when many of these people, when you talk to them, they, in, in some cases, not in every case, they've had horrible abuse. They've yep. been mistreated. They've been broken hearted. 
And that's what Jesus came to do was heal the broken heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I don't understand why the church refuses to develop themselves in this area to minister to these people rather than saying you must come out of that sin when the person needs healing and yes. ministry. They need ministry. the Lord. Okay. I, the Lord I, I, need to, I need to follow up on this because uh, you, this subject of homosexuality and my experience in street preaching is it's very connected. Uh, um, I, um, I, I spent about five years uh, working closely with street preachers from all around the country. They all come to Las Vegas. This is kind of like the Mecca. People, all the street preachers want to come here to preach, and particularly on holidays. Uh, New Year's Eve is the biggest occasion for all the street preachers. But many of these street preachers have said to me, they go to these gay pride parades and they're they're uh, you know abusing everybody and then they have all these horrible signs. I yeah, won't even say, the, I won't even say the words of the horrible signs. The words that they, that they have it's just it's horrible and offensive and 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 it's pushing people away from Jesus and mm -hmm. drawing them to Jesus. Amen. They ask me, they say, Brother Luke, you don't really believe that a practicing homosexual can be saved, do you? That was their attitude almost universally. They almost yep. all yep. the same thing. That, okay. Yep. So uh, of course I, you know, spent years with these people, and uh, they would we would have an annual meeting here, New Year's Eve, and it was like a annual meeting, and it, it was a gathering so that we could all go out and street preach on New Year's Eve, and also it was an opportunity to recognize people and give awards. So uh, they, uh, the very first time I was involved in this meeting, the very first New Year's Eve occasion, I was with them. Uh, we have about about 40 of, of the street preachers in this Jim, Brother Jim's uh, Bible Jim is what he's called. In his house, he was hosting it. He's, he and Reuben Israel were kind of the leaders of the organization. And, and they would give out awards. And, and this time, we're all disturbed because we're going to, it's like 6 p.m. and we're in a couple, of, in an hour or so, we're getting ready to go out to Las Vegas Boulevard and preach to 400,000 people and have these big signs and banners and bullhorns and go out amid that drunken, drug crazy people that want to party and tell them they need Jesus. Okay. Uh, so it's a, it's a very um, um, intimidating thing. And that's for, for the very first time I'm going out to preach on New Year's. Well, it, it doesn't rain much in Vegas, but at that moment, it was raining as hard as I've ever seen in my life. It's pouring down and the wind came up like, it must have been 40 or 50 miles an hour. It blew heavy lawn furniture off of the patio. Wow. And we have this horrible wind and this pouring rain and and how can, you can't preach in that no one's going to be the, the whole crowd will stay inside the casinos they won't go out on the street the way they're supposed to so we can't preach so of course we pray and we're praying lord stop the rain give us good weather lord i swear to everybody this is exactly what happened Within minutes after we're praying for the Lord to stop the rain, it's like the Lord just took a faucet and twisted it. Wow. And the wow. And the wind, and the wind stopped. stopped. And we had perfect, clear weather. You couldn't ask for better weather the rest of the night so the preaching could be done. That's wow. the first time I've seen the Lord. You know, he's, he opened up the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. yes. Rain down on the fire to stop the the, the fire in, in the, with Elijah, I think. Mm -hmm. And he likes to use water for some reason for miracles. And I've got I've got others I'm going to tell you about water and rain. You know it's his will. That's you what know I for his will. But these three preachers, they they uh, they they're most of them have a, a lordship message. They don't believe what practicing homosexuals can be saved. And uh, uh, it's I'm embarrassed that I work. I, I don't understand why that one sin is like something that I don't get it. Like, I yeah, don't. Well, my answer, my answer to one of these guys, Warren, he asked me, Warren says, <coughs> look, you don't think it's practice and homosexual can be saved. Do you? I said, look, you're a practicing sinner. Aren't Thank you? you. He said, well, no, I'm not. I said, look, I see you're sinning right now. You're full of spiritual pride and self-righteousness. You're a practicing sinner. 
So it's how often you sin now that sends you to hell? No, well, it's I thought it. you knew that, Sister Renee. Huh? I'm being ton in cheek. I, I said I thought you knew that. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, well, you can't practice. You can't habitually. Okay, well, who defines yeah. that now? Or who defines the will habitual or practice? And we all practice sin because our flesh fails constantly and falls short of the glory of God. Like Sister Lisa said, whatever is not a faith is sin. Every time we doubt and don't do something of faith, it's sin. When we don't preach the gospel to every creature, it's sin. We miss the mark. When we don't trust God or we worry about something. When you know, And it's so right. sad because when the Lord is showing the Israelites that they do not keep the law, they all claim they've kept them since their youth, and he goes, well, if you look at them all with lust, you commit. So instead of having the law make them guilty so that they'll turn to Christ in faith, the, these people it's take those same happened. verses and then they'll up the standards of the law, but now say you can't now you, you literally have to keep that standard of the law to be saved now. So I have great comfort say I don't even look at a woman with lust anymore. Yeah, right. I was like, pride much? Lie much? <laughs> yeah. You know, they don't get that. If they're blind to what he's saying, that 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 you need him. That's all he's He's saying, you know, and I don't know why people are running around with two eyeballs and two hands. If they take that literal and think that that is some standard they have to keep for salvation, I don't know why they, Didn't you know. Didn't the woman that gouged her eyes out and cut her hands off yet. Right. right. Sister, I also had something to say about that. Um, I had I had a, uh, I knew a pastor that said that the he microphone, would walk the the Can you hear me? Get closer to the microphone. Hold on, hold on. Oh, dang it. Let's see. Uh, I got my headphones again. Can you hear me? Uh huh. Okay, okay. I had a pastor one time tell me that he gave all of his thoughts over to Jesus when he would ever think of a woman in lust. And okay. he told me that he locked it away. And I was like, what do you mean by that? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Why, why are you saying you would lock all your thoughts away to Jesus? Like, what does that mean? <laughs> it's like, the same i committed my life i did this mm -hmm. i turned from my sins me 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 look at what i did mm -hmm. but, you know it, it, all this stuff is great uh but this it, th these shouldn't be the focuses of any part of salvation at all no uh, because they haven't even done the first works the first works is to trust christ and they haven't done that they don't even believe the gospel as a matter of fact they're enemies of the gospel because they preach against it and mock it they really do not believe that the second Adam is mm -hmm. greater than the first. That's right. That's right. And if they yeah. believed it, why do they feel the need to add to it? If they believed it and trusted that he actually did it, yeah. why are they adding something to it? Works why righteous heresy. Yeah. They, they say we preach a partial God. No, we don't. We Could preach. I, uh... Did I miss anybody? Uh, the only one I oh. heard that had talked about their miracle yet is Steve. I don't know if he's still busy yeah. going to the truck or not. But well, uh, let's see. I want to say let Steve go first, but I did want to tell about my need being met. Although we know the kingdom's not of this world, uh, I did want ahead, to go ahead, sister. Steve will interrupt us if he's ready. Otherwise, go ahead, sister Renee. Uh, you know, obviously, you guys know I'm on disability. I went from making a lot of money as a film producer to being disabled with a kid. And I live on very limited income. I don't even make enough to, I, I get under a thousand dollars a month. I couldn't even rent a place. And I was living in my father's house. He had uh, moved in with his wife. They had bought a condo down in Florida. So I was living in the house he had here with my son. Well, the city came to expand the, the interstate and they were taking his house and I was going to have nowhere to go. I couldn't get help. There was no, there was a two year waiting list for, income-based uh, stuff. And even if I got one, I wouldn't be able to afford anything. I couldn't afford to rent anywhere. But I'm telling you, just like sister said earlier, no, it was a brother. Jonathan was saying he heard a voice say, pray for such and such, right? Well, that's what I heard. Pray for a house. I was like, a house? I, I'll never get, like, the reason I'm telling you this is because I don't have physical, like, means of ever owning a house or ever being um approved for one i don't i don't even make enough to, i'm under poverty level 
So for, for this to happen, it, it was absolutely all God. Mm-hmm. And I pray for a house and I kept belittling him, sister. I kept making it smaller. Like, cause you know, I don't want to be like, oh, I'm out here wanting stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I knew the Lord knew I needed a home, a safe home for my yeah. son. And I needed to support us. And it was just us. So I, I prayed. I said, even if you want me in some ghetto or something, and I just rent month to month and I got to scrounge and get it every month. I'll do it. It's fine. I'll just trust you. Just take this fear from me. So, but I kept hearing and I didn't even want to hope that I'm going to give you a house. Pray for this. Like, I didn't know how it just wasn't. Be, it was beyond any possibility. Mm-hmm. So it turned out that they they had to pay my father for the home, but they also had to pay me for what the house would have cost to rent for three and a half years, right? Forty. Wow. Wow. But what they did was instead of paying my rent, we were able to have the city directly pay a person to purchase my house paid in full. Wow. I own a bedroom farmhouse paid in full for my son. Praise Jesus. I'm not one of those prosperity freaks. You know what I'm saying. I never come out and go, believe in foreign new Mercedes supposed to be rich. I don't believe our kingdoms in this world, but I did need a home for my son and I, and he knew my needs and I felt him say, don't, don't make this little. I'm going to do something big on this for you. Wow. Go, and, Jesus. Uh, so, I, that, I mean, it was miraculous. And wow. on top of it is the house I wanted, nobody would answer me. And it was all beat up and stuff. Of course, I'm belittling it. So, I end up finding this house. And I'm like, I want this house. But somebody had already put an offer down. I made the same offer. Didn't increase the amount at all because I didn't have it. Yet, they accepted my offer. Mm-hmm. They accepted my offer. That's so, Jesus. Why? Well, favor, favor, favor. What, Mark? Amen. That was God. That was nothing to do with me mm-hmm. or that you know, getting a job and financing it. No, mm-hmm. this was handed to me. Yeah. Like, but I knew what I'm saying. Like when I couldn't drive for years, I heard out of the blue, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you a little car," and I knew it would be a little used something. But the next day, my brother-in-law shows up. So my sister and I, your sister and I are going to, you know, you find a little car for X amount of money. We'll, we'll buy it for you. Because I was able to walk again. And I could drive again. So, but I heard it first. I heard him say, pray for that. And then the next day, I got, it's like, so when he said that, that really touched me. Because I don't believe in going around going, I'm going to focus. Because that's Luciferian. When you point out a, a product and go, oh. I'm speak that into existence. Because I don't know what God wants for me. This is not I my was into that. Huh? I was into that. Name it, claim it, declare it. It's yours. Right. Into that. That That's theosophy. Up. That's theosophy. Yeah. It's Luciferian. Yeah. It's the secret. It's the miracle. Yes. It's the, you know, yes. and and uh, I believe that, you know, Jesus told us to be, to be happy with clothes and a roof yeah. over your head and food, right? And every day it's got its own troubles. You don't need to worry about anything. Just mm-hmm. trust him day to day. Mm-hmm. And that's really what I wanted to do. So I didn't like telling this story because I didn't want somebody to think I was saying, oh, God will give you a house if you believe. Like, I wasn't saying that at all. Right. It yeah. was but, just that I had a need that I physically impossibly yes. could not fill. I, 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 I do believe in blessings With and God, prosperity. all things are yeah. possible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I want you make exceedingly, it abundantly, above right. all you can ask or think. Right. Right. Sister Renee, uh, you don't secretly have 20 Rolls Royces, do you? No. <laughs> okay. 17. 17, but they're Mercedes. <laughs> okay, so, my, question, uh, my question to everybody is, I, I believe we have a verse in the Bible where it says, don't test God. I think we have another word that says, God says, put me to the test. I'm not really sure where they are or something. Maybe someone can help me. But my question is, do you think it's, it's wrong? I mean, Sister Flores said, God, if you're real, you, I don't have cancer. If you're real, if you're, I have five cancer, I don't believe in you. She put him to the test. i got a story I'm going to tell you about putting God to the test. And, and uh, I did, I'll get your thoughts on it. But I have... Uh, too many occasions where I've prayed uh, um, 
I, I just knew that the Lord was not going to let it rain when we preach. It, it was it was routine. It could be raining, and I go preaching, and it won't rain on us. It happened over and over again. I had one of the preachers call me up as I'm driving over to preach. He, he's supposed to meet me. He says, what are you doing? I said, Warren, I'm on my way to preach. You're supposed to be meeting me. He says, it's raining. I said, Warren, go and face. It won't rain on us. And sure enough, we get there. It's pouring down raining until we get ready to preach, and it stops raining completely. As soon as we leave, it starts raining. Same thing happened with Brother Frank. He calls me up and said, what are you doing? I said, Frank, we know what I'm doing. I'm, you're meeting me at the preaching. He says, it's pouring down raining. I said, Frank, go. It's not going to rain on us. This happens. Praise now, God. One day I'm having a yard sale at my house, and a friend is helping us, Joanne, and uh, uh uh, it starts uh, raining, and we had to stop the, the yard sale. And she says, well, I guess you won't be preaching tonight. You were planning on preaching. I said, no, I'm going to preach. It's... And she said, you can't preach in the rain. I said, Joanne, when I preach, it doesn't rain. She, <laughs> she smiled and smirked, you know. So I'm thinking, you know, because of, because of this uh, attitude, uh, uh, Lord, I, I'm going to ask you to do something special tonight. I'm going to ask you to not just stop the rain that we always do, but I want you to do it in such a spectacular way that nobody could ever argue that this is a coincidence. This is a God incidence. And I say, Look, Lord, I want you to open up the sky like the Red Sea and not let it rain on us, but let it rain all everywhere else because it will pour it down rain as I'm, I'm driving over there to preach. <laughs> And Frank was with me that night, and I told Frank about my prayer, and I swear again, I, I'm not supposed to be swearing to the altar or the gold or anything, but I'm just, my, my yes is yes, my no is no, so believe me, the, the sky above Lost Vegas Boulevard, it, it runs north and south down the valley of Las Vegas, and, and right above that boulevard, it was perfect weather, but everywhere else around us, it was pouring down raining. And I said, Lord, thank you. thank you. And now everybody knows this was whoa. not some lucky break that we got. Whoa, whoa, wow. Whoa. Is that a miracle? So, wow. Uh, I think he wants us to ask. Amen. And I think Amen. he wants us to put him to the test and, and so that we can brag and give him yes. all the glory and boast, boast in him. And he says, pray according to his will. You know his will is to preach the gospel right. to every church. So you Amen. can know with absolute certainty that it was his will for you to be out there preaching. Amen. And I think that's where the prayer is really going to answer. You know for sure what his will is, and you can do that. But the Bible says we pray. We don't even know how we should pray because the Holy uh -huh. Spirit has to pray for us sometimes. That's right. We don't know. Uh, those yeah. moments of absolute clarity, knowing what his will is, and we know his will is always for somebody yeah. to be saved. Well, I think that's another trap of the devil Amen. is people don't do what the Lord Jesus instructed, which is ask. That's right. And mm -hmm. if you don't yes. open your mouth and ask, he yes. can bless you as right. easily as he would like to. You have because not. Because he right. promised us. Exactly. He promised us, ask and ye shall receive. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. People are so right? afraid to ask. Someone accused me of wearing a wig in That's the chat our... room. I'm not wearing a wig. The fan's blowing my hair all ah. over the place. It's not a wig. That's that's um, our view of our father. For can y'all hear me? People have yeah. such an evil yeah. view. Yeah. 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 behind you, Stacy. Okay. They don't think God uh, that that uh, see that they don't understand God's grace, so they're scared to ask Him for anything unless they feel they're deserving of it. But we should never feel we're deserving of it. We should feel like God is just that good. Yes, that's right. Because right. He's good. That's not right. Not, we don't just love any of it. Mm -hmm. Not because yes. I'm good, because He is. Yes. I just want to make one comment. Can I? One thing? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, so when I was in the hospital, get closer to the microphone, life. please. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? That's uh, better. Okay. okay. So when I was in the hospital, my husband was being told I wouldn't make it. My son wouldn't make it through the night. He wasn't a believer. So he, he uh, went into a room. The way he explained it is he called my neighbor 
who was a believer. He said, I need you to come down here and pray. He didn't know oh, how to pray. Oh, wow. He called her. It was a 30, 45 minute drive. He said, I went into a room to try to compose myself. All of a sudden, this light came through the window. And he said, I turned around and it felt like she was there in 10 minutes. Wow. I don't know how she got there. Well, you know, it's just interesting that he wasn't a believer. He didn't know how to pray. He was in his 40s. No, he was 50. And he called my neighbor, who was a believer, a friend of mine. So I just. I just had to throw that in. He says, it shows you. Amen. Yeah. It shows you that deep down, sorry, it shows you that deep down, even atheists know that there is a God. Yes. Yes. Everyone yes. has it in them. They know. Amen. Because when bad stuff mm-hmm. happens, they're like, oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Help me, Jesus. Listen, everybody knows that God exists. They just yes. choose Amen. not to believe him. Yes. That's right. Amen. And more importantly, yes. when they really get into a pickle, they call out Jesus. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they don't even realize <laughs> yeah. it may be the thing to save their bacon Amen. that day. Do you know when I was out there on the street shooting dope on literal Skid Row, downtown oh. LA, yeah. I would go down and shoot with the, uh, the other homeless people. I'd lost my house and everything, and I would go down there and shoot dope with them. Do you know I had the Lord sent people to me? I know it. I have a uh, one guy that showed up out of nowhere. He, he was like he was some kind of junkie or something, but he walked up and he said, the "Lord just wanted me to tell you that he had him and the angels were with you." And then this oh. happened like three different times when I was copping dope. Three different times. One uh, came up to my car. Then I had it happen in downtown. Three different times. So I said, the Lord just wanted me to tell you he's with you. That's he's just amazing. how much he loves us. He did not Amen. leave his Amen. grace and his love. Yeah, I just want to share real quick. I have my mom here. I led her to the Lord a couple of years ago. She was a heroin addict. He delivered her over Jesus. She had a she had a bad bad break in her leg in the hospital. The doctor came in and said, "We know you're a heroin addict. I'm going to give you something to relieve you, to get you through the withdrawal." She said, "I don't want it. I don't want it." She prayed to God. She said, "Either right. take my life or deliver me." Take my life or deliver me. I can't do this anymore. And he delivered her. Praise Jesus. Now, my my addiction didn't get delivered that easy. Mine either. My mom's did. So, you know, we're all different. Yeah, it happens different. Yes. I had a way. I was given a way uh, medically that I didn't have before. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yes, I think Brother Mark was trying to say something. Mark, was that? Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Um, I was just gonna say, Brene did share the greatest miracle that Mm -hmm. God accepted us. But I would like to share what I see personally as the second greatest miracle that He produced in our hearts a love for each other. I don't know you people and you love me. And I know it's not a feigned love. It's a deep, real love. And I can trust you. And like to me, that is a miracle beyond words. Amen. Amen. Yeah, brother, I'm I'm really happy that you recognize that, and it's a, it's very true. Yes, Amen. the fact yeah. that he loves us in the addiction sometimes is a greater thing than actually being delivered right away. Oh yeah, <laughs> to actually Amen. Amen. in our weakness. So if I'm if I know I'm struggling with something in my flesh, and he still loves me through it. That is Amen. a great, great revelation. And yes. I, Amen. you know, that addiction was just a result of other issues. Yes. Has to fix that brokenness mm-hmm. or, or, you know, that's all got to be repaired. And sometimes it's not the outer stuff that he fixes right away. No. Mm-hmm. Inner things that you can't see. And it's just so wrong to tell people 
you know, because I told you I lost all hope. They told me I had to repent of that before I could be saved. But I believe I was saved as a child and just got confused and lost. Because when I came back to the church, that's I was like, wait a minute. I thought he died for me. I just want to get back in fellowship. Right. I thought I was saved. You're telling me, no, you got to stop this and stop that. Be willing to stop it in order. But, you know, uh, and that is a stumbling block for some people. They give up. They don't come to you just as they are. They should be told you come just as you are and just lay it down right. at the cross. And that's, a, that's a new revelation from you. I don't remember ever hearing you say that you went through that per a period where you had that kind of a, a, a worry about maybe yeah. what, you changed your life. I, have, uh, see, I, I got slits up both wrists. Ditches. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Can I? Yeah, I did a, a video when I first started the channel saying that Lordship Salvation almost killed me. Wow. Mm -hmm. Almost uh, killed we've me. We've got someone to this, but, uh, Benjamin here. Uh, Benjamin, um, uh, you want to give us your thoughts on the talk tonight and uh, you have a miracle to share? I think Brother Steve wanted to share. Yeah, we, <laughs> okay, well, I'll we'll have Steve go. I just want to see if Benjamin's microphone is working. Benjamin, is it working? Everything okay? okay. All right, well, I'm going to let you try after Steve here. Steve? All right. No. Um, <laughs> um, wow, so many awesome. Uh, can can you all hear me okay? Yeah. yeah you're okay, good. awesome, yeah, awesome. Yes. Um, uh, so many awesome, I just want to say, uh, well, a couple things, really. Uh, so many awesome uh, uh, miracles and, and praise reports tonight. And um, <clears throat> uh, there's so many things that have happened to me in my life that um, to pick just one um, would be imp almost impossible. But I will pick a couple recently. Um uh, but I've had uh, to the point of where I, I should be, I, I should, I, I should either be dead or, or locked up for, for life. Um, so it's a miracle number one that I'm even talking to y'all and, uh, and even uh, just this past year and today I should, I, I could have, I could have died today. Um, and also wow. this past year I had, uh, I was driving, uh, my truck and I was, I was sick with a coughing cold. Um, and I was literally like a tractor trailer type truck, uh, 18 wheeler. And that's what I do for a living. And I was going down the road at night and I had a coughing fit to the point where, um, my, my vision started to fade at about 60 miles an hour, 65 miles an hour. And then it went completely gray. My, my, I lost all sight at 60 miles an hour. And somehow I was able to stop the truck without going off of the interstate and w with, with no sight and, wow. and praise God. Uh, so that's, that, that was just last year. And then uh, today, um, I don't know if you guys saw the, saw Renee's, uh, is she back? Yep. She's back on here Renee's, uh, video earlier, um, about the mass shooting in Virginia beach. Um, I didn't know it until after the fact, but during the entire, uh, ordeal, I was blocks away from that, uh, happening. Wow. I was in, I was in Virginia beach at the Walmart Super Center uh, in Virginia Beach, uh, literally blocks away from the 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 uh, town hall, or I think it was town hall or, or city hall, uh, where that was happening. So, I I saw the the, the fighter pl uh, planes go overhead. I I mean, um, so. I, few blocks more i could i could have been in it so wow that's and, really close really yeah. yes amen hey yeah. uh, renee renee could you kind of be the host for a minute while i have to step away
Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure. So just praise. pray and praise the Lord that, you know, both uh, Renee and I are both here today, tonight, uh, being able to, 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 to praise him. Cause I know she doesn't live that far from, from there either. Right. Um, but you know, uh, it, pray for the, pray for the families of those that were lost and pray that, God would use a, an opportunity through this to bring the message of the gospel to to those families. Um, pray for their their grieving. I'm sure that's got to be horrible. Family, the shooter's family. People don't realize the pain. Yes. The pain. Yes. When somebody does something like this. They yes. they lose a loved one, but they have the guilt, and then they have the hatred from the world blaming them, like they did something yeah. wrong because someone in their Amen. family took their family members and they got nobody they're right. they're grieving and in pain and then hatred is piled on top of it and mm -hmm. Stephen, i just wanted to uh say i hope you were listening to this i when i posted that video up i put it on private for a little while i was getting very upset because some we have got to start using common sense and courtesy and just a a human kindness because uh, somebody kept posting on everybody's comment well, half of them were probably in hell now. It's oh, wow. they didn't follow Jesus enough. I'm like, do, wow. do you have any idea what that does to someone? Is that Christ like? No. Satan was That's busy in the comment someone? section. Yes. And people do this. I had one lady come in and talk about losing her son to suicide. What do they do? Condemn him. Tell him mm -hmm. he's in hell because he was sinning and it's unforgivable. This is what people do that claim to be Christian. They're not using just even, I wouldn't even, a God hating Satanist would have the sense to be kind when somebody has died. Yep. You know? Yep. Uh, oh, and, and I wanted to say that God that did that to me. They're just, it's wicked. Not just, not just yes. us, members, but yeah. yes. They don't have a right um, spirit. Woo. No, they, no, they don't. No. no, they don't. They're either in their flesh or, or not saved. And I would be yeah. glad you're okay. Ladder. But oh, yeah. um, nice. missed me, me too. Um, and with with what you y'all were talking about about the with that in mind with with what you just said, Renee, about uh, atheists have more common sense. Uh, and and I honestly think there's a difference there between atheists who uh, have well what they call no belief and these these so-called believers that I think are operating under an antichrist spirit uh, other than the other, but uh, because they're enemies of the gospel, but with, yeah. with the atheists and them, uh, I think it was either Lily or somebody else that said they know it's Jesus. And if they're in a panic or in a life or death situation, they call out to Jesus. Amen. Like I remember um, listening to a sermon by a Christian rapper that I like. Um, and he said this and he was using it as an example, like because he's a gangster, he used to be a gangster. And he said straight up to the atheist he was talking to who was trying to argue the the uh you know against god and he said he just said straight up um i bet if i shot you right now you would pray yeah and the guy actually understood what he was saying and actually was like you know what you're probably right maybe yeah, i should think about no, this some more no atheist in foxholes that's what they say no atheist right. in foxholes. yeah that I always believe there's two kind of so-called atheists. One is the one who know there's a God, but they refuse to serve him. They're actually antagonistic toward God. They hate him. Yes. They hate him. Mm -hmm. And then the mm -hmm. others are the one who are just a little bit on the lazy side and won't do the proper investigation. Or they don't <laughs> like what's been done in God's name. And they see injustice, and so they'd rather have no part of it at all. And right. I think I there's the one other in there that say they don't believe, but mm -hmm. have been hurt either yes. by circumstances or yeah. people. And it's usually people that yes. have caused them to not want to believe in God. It's in deep down, and they, they know it's real. To be of God. These people claim to be of God, yeah. but they've hurt them. They in are enemies of God. Yes, 
but they claim to know God. So they're like, hey, if those people are what God, I don't want nothing to do with it. Christians in name only. Yes, yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, uh, Benjamin, are, are you ready to uh, talk now? Uh, sure. Um, so, hi, hi, Renee, and hello, everyone. I'm Mine Ben in the chat. Um, I just really am glad about this live stream because this has motivated me to praise God more and to get and to go into scriptures more. Um, mm -hmm. and um, I just want to share a I um a little thing that has happened to me before I was. Well, this long sort of way that has happened to me before I was saved. Um, before I was saved, about um, I was um, in a weird situation where every weekend I would go up to my grandmother's. My family would send me up to my grandmother's house. And she would teach me um, JW doctrine. Um, and this was up until I was about 12 or so. And, around, and um, once I stopped being able to see her regularly, I, I started becoming more and more atheistic, more and more... Um, more and more um, far away from thinking that there was a God. And um, what ended up happening was there was this, um, there's one time where I was really um, frustrated with seeing all the things that uh, my grandma has taught me to be a, a sort of, lie in the way I was thinking and I just um, prayed one time to the Lord saying Lord um, I I um, I need you Lord and I, I please show me show to me that you're real if you are real and I prayed this when I was like 12 or 13 I'm sure there's more words to the prayer but I just basically asked the Lord to show me that he was real so I may believe him. But for a while, I was still atheistic. But around the time that I was, um, around a few years ago, um, I started getting into these conspiracy sort of YouTube channels. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Warn people about that. And and then it was um and then, you know, I went on to this guy's kind of discredited now, but the vigilant Christian Mario. Mm -hmm. Um, so called anyways, and I got really sucked into him and, um, his got his false gospel of lordship salvation. And I believe it for a while, but I knew logically, I just knew logically it was impossible for me to ever meet its demands, like how people fit. And and I just kept on looking, and it took me like six months or so. And I was, and um, there was another channel that I found from um, Vigilant Christian, a link to a uh, a call for an uprising. And then there was this these couple times around 2016 where a call for an uprising did live streams on D13 Watchmen, which was an old channel that used to do Christian live streams. And that was, and I was also searching on the internet about, um, 
the um, gospel at the same time. I was trying to find out what's the truth behind all this stuff because at this time I was convinced now that God was true mm. because I had seen all the conspiracies in the world, all the demonic activity, all the spiritual stuff, but I still was caught up in this lordship salvation stuff. And it was through, like, when I was exposed to D13 Watcher and started watching videos, it was the first time there that I was exposed to the gospel of salvation by grace through faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone and not our filthy rag works. That is a miracle yeah. right Go there. Ahead, Praise God. God. And Amen. it took me so long, but I just praise the Lord that he guided me, navigated me through, because I'm not, besides the JW thing, I don't have any link to Christians or religious stuff here where I am. And the Lord just guided me around YouTube to find out what the true gospel is. And I'm so... I praise him so much for that. Thanks. That is phenomenal. What do you do? As much Amen. false teaching, subtle little Amen. things added. The fact that God revealed this. You know, when when I first started, I kept telling you guys I would hear these preachers. There'd be something off. I I got so upset that I just said, yeah, "I'm not, that's I'm not right. nobody. I'm, I'm just going to read scripture and let him show me." That's yeah, it. That's right. That's why I don't read commentaries. None of it. I just. I'll look after I've read it and see if they have heard the same thing or get a similar revelation. But it's a miracle that he was guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That root truth, that simplicity in Christ. And I'm Amen. glad the law made you guilty, Benjamin. You were honest with yourself and said, who can stand if this is the standard for God, and, and, and it just doesn't work. It, it, it's either a free gift paid for by what Jesus did. He either paid for all our sins or he didn't pay for any. Uh, if, if, if it works, then it's not grace. And so something, something in that teaching uh, made you guilty, and that's where all people need to get. And you got to that place of humility where you threw your hands up, and then you were as a little child because that's what we have to do we have to become as a Amen. little man and yeah. trust in our father my father said i have sent a way for you to live with me forever i have paid the debt for you and so i put myself in that's Amen. our father in heaven and that is what faith is to be persuaded Amen. that what god that's promised right. is able to perform and that's a miracle that you got through all of that all of that false teaching and got to the truth of it. Brother Mark, uh, uh, he says one of the greatest miracles is uh, the love that we have for him, for each other. Praise God. And, and, uh, and now yeah. we see uh, Ben uh, and showing that the, the real, the greatest miracle, of course, is this uh, grace of God, this free gift of eternal life, the guarantee of eternal life. By grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Amen. We can't earn it. We, we can't lose it. And uh, that uh, what greater miracle is there than that? And Brother Luke, do, do any of us, y'all answer this, do any of us think we shouldn't live for God, that sin doesn't matter, we just do whatever we want, and it, it doesn't matter at all, and promote sin, and uh, do any of us do that just because we trust in Jesus? Uh, no, uh, I, no. I, what I do is I, I no. don't give people no. license. Mm -hmm. I just give them a license to rest. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Look at Hebrews. Love. Amen. Amen. Joy. Right. That's, That's what we got. Love. The mm -hmm. love of Christ constrains us. Yes. Not fear, not condemnation. The love. But if somebody never gets that revelation that we all got here, of his love for us. His grace was not dependent on us being good. Mm -hmm. but I just have to interject. Mm -hmm. uh, in Hebrews, it says uh, that we have to labor to enter into Amen. that rest. Amen. And yes. that's exactly what we 
all seem to have discovered mm -hmm. is that the lies of lordship damnation which haven't ever saved anybody it always leads people to misery and doubt but the good mm -hmm. part about it is when they see the truth they'll never return to that vomit mm -hmm. it is absolutely mm -hmm. heretical yes, to accept you that doctrine you yeah. labor you strive to enter into the rest that's right. And we Lord have to beat Lord. Satan back. We have to beat back his lies when he comes That's to you right. and say, I saw you do that. And I saw you do that. And I remember when yes. you did this. That's why I always say, remind him of his future That's when he right. tells you about his past, your past. That's right. Do you know what Martin Luther said? Well, he was a little more crude, but I'll tell you. He said, sometimes Satan will come to me in the middle of the night and start reminding me of all my sins. Mm -hmm. And I just say, yeah, I did do that. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus paid for it. Now leave me alone so I can go to sleep. Like That's just, what I told my mom. The yeah. enemy, enemy never, yep. my never mom. seen. That's what I Redeemed. that's what I told the uh that's what I told the, the demon that tried to attack me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Oh, you think that's I'm about to is. get up and uh start rebuking? Uh, yes. So if, um, if Jesus was strong enough to save me and die me and do all that, he can save me from this. I'm going to bed. Right. <laughs> Good night. You know, when I was a little girl, I used to be afraid of the dark and mm -hmm. I'd have mm -hmm. nightmares and I always mm -hmm. thought it was a monster in the closet. And I used to pray that God would strengthen me. Little did I know he was going to allow that bastard Satan to visit me in the middle of the night <laughs> and wake me up from a sound sleep. Now, if you've never had that happen, it ain't fun. No. I mean, a red no, body, not. black hard, black mm -hmm. horned devil came into my room, Good sat boys. at the foot of my bed, woke mm -hmm. me up. Yeah. And I... I couldn't think I was experiencing sleep paralysis in some kind of way these devils try to scramble yeah, your hold thoughts. You down. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I couldn't speak. And I thought Jesus and my mouth was freezing. And I said, Jesus. And the instant I said it, he disappeared. Yep. Yeah. And that will help you important. grow in faith. I'm not a giant in faith, but it'll help you grow in faith when that kind of oh, thing yeah. happens. Yes. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can lay a card to God's elect. God justified you. He's got that's his, right. You got his righteousness. Nobody can accuse you. That's right. And that's why I learned it the hard way because you know what? Let me tell you something. I've said this on uh, the other broadcast before. I went through, I was a psycho. I went through like three months oh. straight of spiritual warfare with freaking demons. Like it was bad. And I, I was like, that. Jesus was telling me, yeah. you know, when you can hear God talk to you, he was yeah. telling me, listen, you need to rest. Okay. Just rest. I was like, no, Lord, we have to fight this fight. <laughs> we got to win together. And Jesus was like, you, you seriously need to just sit down. <laughs> like, oh, I didn't. I was like, no. I need to be up at midnight. I need to open my Bible. I need to rebuke the devil. So that that final night that I gave up, <laughs> I came yeah. back from the hospital. Meanwhile, God had told me like three weeks before that you will receive your deliverance after Josiah is born. And that was my child um, that I was pregnant with at the time. I was going through spiritual warfare at nine months or whatever, seven, eight, six months pregnant. Yeah. And I was staying up midnight like a psycho. I was really crazy. And... Um, Wow, I just remember myself. I was really crazy. And, you know, God was telling me to rest. I wouldn't rest. And then that final um, night when everything ended, I came home from the hospital um, like two days before. And I was trying to go to sleep because I was so drugged up <laughs> from the epidural and all the stuff they give you when you have babies. Yeah. And but because I was still in spiritual warfare mode, because I was thinking, man, these demons are going to come I'm back home. These demons are gonna <laughs> come to my house. <laughs> so I'm like sitting there all freaking out, like, you know, because I had a spirit of fear and you're not supposed right. to have a spirit of fear. Right. But I did right. because I wasn't right. fully trusting that Jesus Christ alone was able to deliver me from this attack. So yeah. that's what I figured out that night because of the tiredness and the drug, the medicine, the tiredness. And then had I knew have a newborn, you know, I saw the spiritual realm. My spiritual eyes were open and I saw the demons trying to come attack me and my newborn baby. So yeah. I said, that's when I opened up, I snapped up because I saw them try to attack me. And standing at the edge of my mm -hmm. um, door, I sat up and I said, you know what? 
I said, so you think I'm going to get up and you think I'm going to start rebuking? You think I'm going to start cussing demons, getting my Bible, praying, doing all that so I can get into all this, this, this nonsense? I said, I'm not. <laughs> I said, yeah. I turned to my American accent. I was like, I'm not. I'm not about uh-huh. me. I was like, no, I'm not. I was like, listen. <laughs> <laughs> if Jesus is strong enough to save me because I believe him, he's strong enough to deliver me from you. So I said, I'm going to bed. Amen. that I've ever seen in the Bible is be still and know that I'm God. Amen. I got to praise the Lord and thank you right now because I mean, I love the brethren, but I'm telling you, I am so so moved by the sisters because yes. powerful sisters yes. 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 I to say Amen. one other thing sisters if i could Amen. Powerful, wonderful sisters sister renee sparked me when i talked about that devil coming in my room talking about martin luther because yeah. my dad had told me a story about him when i was a little girl and how he was asleep and the devil came into his room and he looked up and he felt this icy cold presence and he said he turned over and he looked and he saw this most grotesque being with claws and fangs. Oh, and he wow. said, oh, it's you. And rolled over and went back to sleep. Yep, yep, oh, my yep, God. Yep. You know what? Uh, that, 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 wow. that Satanist guy said that he showed up one night because he used to sit down and talk to him all the time. He called him daddy. And so after he got saved, John suppose he uh, came into his room. <laughs> And, and and he said, just turn the light on and I'll leave. And he's like, no, right. I'm, not, he's not, I'm not taking any instruction from you. I'm not turning the light on. I'm going Amen. back. I'm not doing nothing. Nothing for me to do. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah, because you know what? I think fear, well, actually, I know fear feeds them. Yes. 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 Because yes. once you do one thing, once, okay, for instance, if you have a demonic attack in your dream, okay? So usually oh, the I flesh have. reacts, you're, you're, the flesh reacts, the flesh wants to, oh, that's right, I'm going to get up, I'm going to pray, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast today. That's what my flesh used to want to do. Oh, I need to fast. I had to re I had to renew my mind. And how did I do that? By leaning more into God and what he did. So instead of me waking up trying to uh, chastise myself by fasting thinking that somehow I'm going to get some more spiritual strength. Right. No. I have all of the riches and the in the fullness in Christ Jesus and he has already done it. I don't have to do anything more. All I can do is say, "Jesus, you saw what happened. Did you see that dream?" Okay, Lord, deliver me. Stand up for me. Yeah. Rebuke the devil. I said, Lord, rebuke Satan. That's why I say I don't even say Satan, I rebuke you. No, I don't even do that. I say the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Mm-hmm. Because I don't even have time to talk to Satan. I don't have time. I don't have the time. Right. <laughs> no, that no, that's good. Yeah, the, the, the no the the hardest thing to do is just to not have any not to lean on any of our own strength. And you are so right to say you because you're thinking just like I would, uh, what can I do? To get spiritually strong. No, I'm leaning on you did the right thing. You leaned on Christ's strength. Amen. Not your own, based on fasting or whatever. But on the, right. the strength that's already there, because his strength's perfected my weakness. Hey, uh, I'm uh I know that everybody will volunteer because that's who I know who you are, but I only want one person to volunteer for a moment here, uh, so that uh, Mike can come in. All right, I don't know if maybe maybe you don't need one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, we don't need any volunteers. Uh, there's an opening, Mike, Peanut, Kakawara, wherever you are. There's an opening now if you want to link and join because he has a, a, a miracle he wants to share, but there wasn't room before. And so, I have to go, Brother Luke, because Jen's got school and it's midnight. Love you, Renee. Okay. Yeah. Love you, Renee. Uh, yeah. God bless you, sister. It is midnight uh, back east, and I understand. So uh, I'm. I don't want to rush people off, but I also want to know uh, if, if you don't have to leave right away, Renee. Can you, if we can take a minute for everybody, to just kind of get a little summary of their thoughts here. Sure. Uh, and, and we'll fin- we'll finish. Yeah, up. I don't want to rush it off. I was just saying that you know I got to get him. I don't want to. Yeah. Close- so if Mike if Mike comes on, we'll listen to his miracle. If he doesn't, then let's just t- each take a moment here to just give a um, one minute or two each to to give our our uh, 
our uh, thoughts on on this time together tonight here uh let's uh let's just go uh i'll go from my screen left to right uh benjamin you're the far left you want to uh, tell us what you think of the, the time we had tonight yes one more minute all right benjamin's not ready how about jonathan uh um all right uh so i um oh hello hello yeah yeah benjamin we're listening to you just to kind of sum up your thoughts on the on the fellowship and talk tonight <laughs> oh, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Can you guys hear me? I, I'm not we're, listen, we're listening, Benjamin. Uh, All right. Oh, to... I'm sorry. I muted my I muted my Chrome browser. Where I actually had this stream playing. <laughs> okay. Um. So I um. I just want to say um. Um. Thank you all for coming and forming the stream tonight. And um, most importantly, thank the Lord for bringing a nine, ten people here tonight to share share testimonies of what they've seen from the Lord and the um, praise God for His glorious gospel. And um, I... Um, I guess I will conclude with that. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you being here tonight. Thank and, you. Uh, let be before we have everybody kind of sum up their thoughts here. We finally got a uh, Mike in with us. He's been waiting to get in so he could tell us a, a miracle in his life. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, hey, Luke, how's it going, brother? How you doing, by the way? Uh, I, I'm so blessed. I don't want to feel like I'm bragging, though. It's just, I got too many praise reports, and uh, so I, I have to keep it uh, keep it down. <laughs> awesome, super cool. Hey, thanks for inviting me on, too. Look, I appreciate you, man. Um, so um, the one, the I, I think personally that there's a lot of miracles that happen in our life daily. Mm -hmm. but we just don't recognize it because there's a lot of stuff that kind of happens behind the scenes. So, like. I was, um, I was listening to what Steve was saying and what he was talking about was that his, like his, uh, his, he lost his sight for a while and thank God he still has that back. But there was so, so much intensity going on with that moment he was talking about where, you know, he could have gotten into an accident. He's losing his sight. I mean, those two things alone are just pretty dramatic. And then uh, there was also the shooting that was going on next to him. So who knows? Maybe that whole thing was to meant to stop him from getting into the uh, the whole the, the altercation with the the shooting and whatnot. So I guess I want to try to say is that wow, yeah. right? So maybe sometimes things happen for a reason. So maybe like what may look like something negative, like say you missed your flight, um, or you know you you got up late, you missed mm -hmm. the the meeting or whatever it was. Maybe you were meant to miss that um, that appointment for a, a uh, job interview because someone ended up getting shot there or, or whatever it is. So sometimes things not, might not look on the outside like they're a miracle, but they really are. So wow. just kind of want to start out with that. But um, but for like an obvious example, though, I remember um, a few years ago, I was driving home in the rain. It was like the first rain of the season. And um, I was in the fast lane. And I drive pr pretty fast, but at the same time, I always count off the 1,001, 1,002, et cetera, to make sure there's a safe distance between me and the driver in front of me. And this guy came along um, in the slow lane next to me, sped up, and cut off my um, my reaction time. So he got between me and the cars that were in front of me. And, um, ha and I tr so it made me have to compensate, which I always kind of figure out someone's going to do something like that, or at least like count on that so I, I give myself extra room for people who don't think of the people around them so anyway um this car comes it cuts off my reaction time i'm like oh crud now i gotta start slowing down but i can't slam all my brakes because then i'm just gonna you know roll or something and so um then i looked and they, this guy lost control the guy was cutting me off and he ended up banging the car in front of him and so at that point uh, 
a pileup started to accrue. And so I was like, okay, now what am I going to do? And it realized all this is happening in split second. So um, I'm in the fast lane. There's a, a cement shoulder to my left with a, sm a very small shoulder. Um, and there's traffic coming on the right side. And so um, I look in front of me. I can't go f forward because forward is the accident, which you know equals injury if nothing else and so i look okay then my only other option is i'm going to look to the left i look to the left and then a few of the cars started sliding and they banged into the the divider um where the shoulder was at so left isn't an option front isn't an option so that only leaves slamming on the brakes and maybe rolling which that's not really an option so i didn't even bother to look you know i just figure well i guess it looks like i'm going right then hopefully there's no cars there but let's see what happens so i turned right um, and luckily there wasn't, you know, a car coming or if there was, they slowed down in time. And Mike, because I went left straight and right again in the rain, then uh, the car completely lost control. So there I was like uh, a spinning on the freeway. I ended up doing a 180 degree turn. My car died because it's a stick shift. I'm looking at all these cars coming towards me. And so I just quickly put neutral, put the stick shift back in gear and then turn back around. and. Um, so to me, that was a miracle that I didn't get hurt on the freeway during rush hour traffic coming home in the rain like that. Oh, wow. praise God! Yeah, that is that's intervention. Praise, praise God. God. But on top of that, is is a it to me? It's just a miracle to find this channel, to find Luke's channel, to find everybody who's in here with us right now. Um, I, you know, we gain strength from each other, and um, and uh, I, I hope that you know this is the end of the month. I, I, you know, I just had a, um, been through a lot recently. And so, um, you know, I've been kind of down and out for a while. So for me, it's a miracle that, um, tomorrow, you know, I'm going to try to, uh, to do a live stream. I haven't done one in a while. It's, it's June the 1st. I think it's going to be a special day. So, um, I hope I'm hoping for a miracle tomorrow that, you know, people come out and take part in, in a, it'd be a blessing for everybody involved that's my hope for a miracle tomorrow on june 1st and there that is my story so ta-da amen that's fantastic mike amen. it's good amen. to see you bro uh, thank you jesus thanks, thanks for being patient so uh, till we could get, get you in here and uh all right wonderful I, I i mean i could i could go on and on telling you about all the times i should have died and, or should have been in prison and i was spared i won't that, that would be another entire two hours to go through all that. But now let's get back to the summaries. Uh, Jonathan, uh, you're next. Uh, take a minute and t summarize your thoughts on the time tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty awesome hearing of all these miracles. And I believe God's bigger than infinity, you know. <laughs> yeah, I got study big numbers and stuff there, and he's bigger than a Googleplex, bigger than a Gongulus. And even the yeah. number I've come up with, me and me, me like a poor oompa that's so big that no human can come. You gotta meet my son. He's a Google audiologist or whatever. Oh, I'm one of the main Googleologists. I've been. Okay, well, you need to meet him. He, uh, uh, oh. uh, send me a message on the recent video I did, please. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd do that. Uh huh. Yeah. The day when we started, I told him that very thing. <laughs> that's a graphic of four dimensions. I believe God's bigger than wow. infinity dimensions. And it, oh, yeah, <laughs> he could do anything. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to say something to you. Oh yeah, bring him in. Wait, he was looking at that picture you had. Hey Jim. Wait, what's your last name? Uh, Jonathan Bowers. You invented beef. Yeah, I'm the one that invented beef. Yeah. You invented beef. Oh, he is jumping beef. up and down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Personal raise work. I must know. <laughs> what say again? Something about rays. What? A ray notation? Pentational rays? Yes. Yeah. A pentational? I'm hoping to do a video on that in the future. Yeah, because I know your heart's right The, right the X structures to reach the pentational arrays. Yeah, uh, note, if you're wondering what it is, it's a notation I came up with to generate the largest uh, numbers you can imagine. And, and they make Googleplex look like nothing. Uh, if you ever heard of Googleplex, that's one followed by one followed by 100 zero zeros, and that's tiny compared to these numbers, this function. And I just want to know how big is God, so I come up with this array notation, and <laughs> it led to that. <laughs> On the infamous Mia 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 Loca Power. Yeah. 
<laughs> so you've seen my website. Yeah. Uh, you recognize this picture? Uh, yeah, it's yeah, from, it's on from the website. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's some of the graphics I did. Well, on. it was interesting talking These are to cross sections of various four dimensional shapes. I yeah, <laughs> see if I can get on there real good. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <Hey>. Yeah. <laughs> That was <laughs> All right, Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan, give us your little summary. Yeah, I think this is awesome. Uh, yeah, some of y'all's miracles sounded a lot like uh, what happened with my mom, and I've heard one that reminded me of something that happened with my brother, like the, the guy driving and God protected him. Uh, my brother kind of was in a situation. He thought he was going to hit a car, and he felt like he went right through him, but uh, there was no collision. <laughs> Wow. One time. And, wow. Oh, God can protect you and, and uh, bring miracles and all that. <laughs> all, all right. Well, I'm, I'm very glad that uh, you can be with us tonight. And, uh, you know, I'm, there's, a, there's some of you that I've been uh, observing, but it's the first time I've had a chance to actually speak and interact with you. So I'm, I'm very pleased about that. And, uh, okay, uh, uh, Sister Flora. So give us some of your thoughts on tonight. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, wow. Well, first of all, that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Second ago. Um, and also, yeah, I just feel so happy. I'm so excited. You guys don't understand. Um, it took, it, you know, for a long time, I just couldn't find a, a, a safer environment, you know, and, and I take this place so seriously um, I love everyone here and I would really hate for poisonous snakes to be part of us but God knows all who are his so I just praise God Amen. and I thank you Jesus for allowing us to have this lovely wonderful night together to express everything that's been going on and express all of the miracles that you've performed in our life or well, not all of it because we know that even us breathing is a miracle so we just thank you lord because you're awesome because you're amazing and i just praise your holy name thank you jesus amen. love you guys bye amen amen, amen. amen. okay uh, next, we got Sister Lisa for the Most High Jesus. Praise the Lord. Uh, I was just meditating when you asked us to say something finally. And I, mm -hmm. What came to mind was Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like uh, this evening having all these meeting of the minds to testify of the goodness of God right here in the land of the living where we can be blessed by one another's testimony and witness that Christ is still alive. He's still real. He still re responds to people who call on his name and who are called by his name. Amen. 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 Amen, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Keep preaching, sister. I love it. Oh, well, <laughs> don't tell me that because I could preach all night. <laughs> I love <laughs> Jesus. I love what he's done for me. I love how he has set the captives yeah. free. The Bible says if you'll know the truth, the truth will make you free. It drives me bananas when people say set you free because that ain't what it says. It says make you free because whom the son has made free is free indeed. You can be in prison and be free in Christ. Absolutely. Can't hold you. Amen. Amen. And it, yeah, so I true. love when people come together to honor his name and talk about the wonders that he's done because it wasn't under our own power. It was under the power of the Holy Spirit. But the one last thing I want to share is what I would call the testimony of shut your mouth. <laughs> now, <laughs> this happened to me. If you've never had the Holy Spirit to tell you to be quiet, wait for it. Don't worry. One day he will. I, I was have. at work. And a co-worker there had 
her and her boyfriend were living together, okay? And they were believers, but they had kind of got out of the things of God and they decided to come back into the things of God. And she was giving me a testimony about it. We caught each other. I was on the way in and she was on the way out. And she was telling me about her situation, which I knew she was living with this gentleman she wasn't married to. So... I'm sitting there and I was like, Lord, should I say something? Uh, uh, you know, I don't I want to speak if you don't want me to speak. And I was going to open my mouth to say something about her situation because she has two little girls that were preteen. And I was like, you know, sister, that's not a good example for your girls. I'm thinking all this in my head. And I opened my mouth. I took a deep breath to say it. And the Holy Spirit said, be quiet. Oh, 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 I'm dealing with her about that. Yes, and if you uh, open your mouth and speak, she's going to get offended and it's going to take me years to bring her back. That's what he told me. I closed my yeah. mouth. I didn't wow. say a word. And she told me and continued to rejoice about her going to this church. Well, about three months go by and I see her again. Only I'm coming out and she's coming in. And she said, oh, I got a testimony for you, Sister Lisa. I want you to know the Holy Spirit dealt with me about my living situation, that it wasn't good to be living with this man I wasn't married to in front of my little girls. And so we yeah. separated and we're going to come back together in marriage. Now that is true before the living God. That's what burns me. Thank you. Act like the Holy Spirit don't Thank do you. his job. Yes. That's right. Right. That's what, he knows yes. how to do his job. Amen. You. Thank you. Thank you. I keep saying, would you just let Amen. God deal with his kids? Yes. God knows how to Thank take you. care of his children. Amen. With his children. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Other people. Amen. Amen. I love where you went with that, Lisa. So authentic. It like it seemed like you're going to like it like telling someone else how they need to do this, that, and the other thing. It was just the opposite of that. That was brilliant. That was yeah. awesome. That was Praise lovely. the Lord. If you let Sister Lisa start talking, I guarantee you you're gonna get all fired up. Oh yeah. On oh, fire. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It. Let me ask Renee. Yeah. What, what are you thinking tonight? This time? Well, I, I wanted to say, um, I have been less online lately. I'm buried in weeks and weeks of emails on top of other stuff I need to get done. And I am just swimming in anxiety and chemical depression. I've struggled with it my whole life, but I don't take meds anymore. It's been years. But every now and then I get, and it's not because there's anything bad. It's just chemical. It's physical. And I, I deal with this. But uh, to hear... Because there's a difference between happiness and joy. You know, happiness is, you know, you're circumstantial. But joy can come through even when you're in grief or when you're going through something. It's just a peace that God gives you that it's all okay. Um, and so this helped me tremendously to focus because St. Paul says, whatever thing is good and is true and is honest, and whatever edifies, Focus on that. That's why the gentleman bringing up the conspiracy channel. I'm like, that does nothing to elevate and lift up and strengthen the body of Christ. It does nothing yeah. but stir fear up. You know this stuff's going to happen. I'm not saying being ignorant of it, but this people get obsessed. They love the bad news. It's like watching a horror movie. You know, it's it's this is what we need. We need to come together and tell of the good things that he's done when we, like Lisa was saying, get ourselves out of the way. Amen. And the hard part for me, like I said, is to be still and know he's God, to not do anything. So this, this helped me tremendously. My spirits are really low. I just haven't been feeling myself uh, lately. So this helped me a lot. Uh, I needed this fellowship and, um, it makes me so sad to think, all, you know, all those that accuse us. And it's interesting because we don't boast about how we live our faith. And so they accuse us because we don't boast to tell them all the good stuff. We do. But it's, it's um, wonderful to be able to make it all about Jesus. 
and to boast in our weakness, to boast and be honest. You know, like you said, your addiction wasn't gone right away. It didn't happen for you like that. And I think it's dangerous when we put our own experiences as a litmus test or some standard or some bar to prove somebody actually had a salvific experience. Yeah. Uh, Jesus said Amen. it was like oh, man, we don't know where it's going, where it comes from, but you know, right. we don't uh, put our experiences as because it hurts faith. Because they're like, well, I still got withdrawal. Does that mean he, he didn't really save me? You no. know what I mean? No. So no. Uh, it's good that we can come together and be honest and not have to put on a facade that we got it all yeah. together. And that we don't struggle and I don't sin. That's been 10 years and I haven't sinned. I hear this kind of nonsense. <laughs> yes, me too. Uh, so it it church my heart so it's much. Bad. Bad. Everybody was talking about him. It was yeah. all him. You know, so I really appreciate it. I just, I feel so uh, filled inside. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. Praise, Praise, Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Love you. Praise God. Um, the, your your point, Renee, that we're talking about Him. That's why I believe it's safe to call us Christians, because yeah. we are focusing and Amen. knowing it's all, it's all about Christ. No? Right unconsciousness. Yeah. Okay, let's ask us uh, uh, Stacy to sum up your thoughts. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you, everybody. I look up to all of you. In fact, I was nervous. I was like, I'm going to be on here with Renee and Lily and Kay Stover and a couple of uh, Brother Steve. And I was nervous, but the Holy Spirit told me, no, you need to do this. I've prepared you. So I just want to thank you for having me on, Brother Luke. And I just, you know, I want to read a scripture. Uh, It's Romans 835. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? tribulation trial persecutions you know yes. persecutions famine nakedness peril or sword Amen. well nakedness you know i was going through shame when i was going through my trials my my loss because i didn't think that love christ that love that christ loved me i felt shame i felt condemnation but that's farther from the truth he loves us through it all amen and just God bless Amen. all of you. Have a good week. Love you. Amen. Amen. Love you too. Holy girl, love you. Love you all. Love you. We love you. Next next up is uh, Mike. That was fantastic, Stacey. Yeah, thank nice. Thank nice you job, so Stacey. Much. Yes. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. I love you, Renee. Love you. Um, love you right back. Okay, so I guess we're like we're summing up our our thoughts at the end. I guess that's what we're doing. Just tell us what you thought of the time tonight. <laughs> oh, I thought it was really positive. It's good to hear about things like that, like miracles and all that. It's sort of like what Renee was talking about, where it's um, uplifting to, to to hear those kind of things. So it's, it was I thought it was special. It was really cool. Was kind of, I mean, I, I really like the things you go into. I like my favorite th- times. I think are when you do the um the the bread and wine thing once a month. I forget what that's called, but that's really special when we do that. But um, it's a great topic. Uh, and for me, I found it uplifting. And, um, and it's just always a, a miracle when we get another day to, to spend with each other. And uh, you know, it would be really cool miracle, though, is if anybody in here in chat um, hasn't found Jesus Christ yet, or yeah. anybody who watches this video down the line, if, if they feel like Jesus is talking to them right now. Yes. And um, and right, and they come to the truth. That would be the the best miracle of all, I think. Um, but on that note, just so <laughs> that's it. Awesome. Amen, Amen. Cockle Body. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. It. it took a while to get you in, uh, but I'm happy you were able to do it. Uh, Steve. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I thought tonight was absolutely wonderful absolutely necessary um uh, the 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 joy of fellowship like this is just absolutely awesome and i hope this is more than just a a once in a while thing i i would love to see this uh be a regular addition to uh 
your channel, Luke, and to have more stories of, of diverse people, just us lifting up God and in so doing, lifting up the, the body of Christ, because when he is lifted up, he carries us. And um, the scripture for me tonight uh, on this is we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And that is that we testify of Christ and what he has done for us first and through the gospel and saving us by believing it. (laughs) And secondly, and walking through life with us, whether it, whether it's rain that falls on the just or the unjust or during those times of, of being led by the still waters and green pastures, or when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, knowing that Christ is with us, we need not fear any evil, especially given the times in which we live in. I think these kind of uh, times of gathering together are going to be of utmost importance even more as we see the day approaching and the evil growing worse. That is mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. thoughts. Mm-hmm. Pra- bless praise you all. Lord. Bless all right. you all and praise Amen. the Lord and wonderful testimonies tonight of God and his mm-hmm. awesomeness. Yeah. And he is far beyond infinity. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. And I just Amen. wanted to say also um, pray that um, look up our redemption draweth near. Jesus Amen. is coming soon. Mm-hmm. Yes. Hey, uh, I think the only one that hasn't summarized uh, yet is uh, Mark. I was saving you for last since you said you were praying for this program, I, unbeknownst to me. So, Mark. Uh, thank you. Um, I really appreciate you listening to God and the Holy Spirit and producing such a program in a very timely fashion. I'm sorry, I'm going to get emotional. Um, I, I've had so many miracles, so rapid fire that I'm overwhelmed by them. And this is just one more amazing grace. Um, so I, I let us not um, forsake the gathering together as the custom of some, as we see the day approaching, um, let us build each other up in affections that are not feigned. Um, Let us, because without love, we are nothing. We are a sounding brass. Mm -hmm. Um, if, If we don't have each other in these days, uh, we begin to come unglued um that's why we have so many that are need in need of psychotherapy and medications and things of that nature because they've forgotten how to sit and love one another and talk and enjoy fellowship and company um let us stir up these good things amongst ourselves rather than strife and contention and division um, Luke, I hope, um, what I was praying for earlier is that uh, there would actually somebody that I could throw under the bus to create a channel to do this very thing, because I would do it because I have no channel except for I don't have the capability. So I'm hoping that somebody will grab the torch and run with it. And, you know, this once a week or so, we can meet and discuss these things about how great God is, how wonderful Christ is, how luckily blessed we are that he, for his name's sake, saved us. And not only did he save us, but he continues with us daily so that we don't have to worry or be anxious or get upset. But we can be overwhelmed with power and love and joy and peace and long-suffering and patience. And that people who I've never met, I can say, 
They love me. They love me because I'm me, because of Christ in me. Um, thank you, Luke. I really appreciate you. Thank you, everybody else. I truly love you um, from an unfeigned place. Uh, and let us, let us exalt Christ um, always in everything we do. Um, and, and let us not tear each other down, but build each other up. If we see one weaker in the faith, don't offend them. Strengthen them. Thank you. Give them double Amen. up. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you, Luke. I'm Amen. sorry I took so long. No, no that was good. Uh, oh, hey, hey, Luke, real quick. Uh, I just want to add one more thing. I just want, I'm just saying I'm, um, I'm thankful for Jessica. I know Jessica's in the chat, and she's been, you know, uh, she's awesome. And so I just wanted to say that real quick. Okay. Uh, I, I'm sure, Brother Mark, that uh, we all say amen to your sentiments. Yes. And, uh, amen. The love, the love, the love, love you, you, Mark. The is real. Uh, the, the, the love that God has for us and the love that we have for each other is real. And love I, um, before I give my summary, I think someone was, someone was Lily, were you, there's something more you're going to say? I was just saying, love you, Mark. Thank you. All right. Love you too, Mark. We can always pause to do that again. Yes. Amen. Uh, okay. Um, well, my thoughts on this time tonight uh, is that, uh, you know, I, I, I do a Sunday live program, a Wednesday night live program. Uh, but those are, those are totally different than this. Those are, that's a Bible study more than than what we did tonight here. This was wonderful fellowship. It was um, a time for us to uh, praise Jesus, uh, recognize him for who he is and what he's done for us. And I remember Br Brother Cripps uh, in his testimony, I heard him say that, that he, he trusted Jesus for salvation a long time ago, but only recently has he learned to trust Jesus for all his needs in life. Yeah. And, uh, I, I'm, I, I know that he is trustworthy. We give all of our cares, all of our burdens, all of our needs over to him and trust him for it. And I'm happy that now we could took this time tonight to, uh, to honor him and recognize him for all the miracles that he's done. And, and I trust him to continue doing it. So Amen. as far as doing more of these, I think we all had a wonderful time. So I expect that probably we'll do some more. And, uh, okay. Uh, I guess uh, that there's nothing else anybody needs to say. Uh, it's, I know it's late back east, uh, but uh, let me just close by saying thank you for being here. Thank you, for everybody, for participating. And bless you all in the name thank of our you. great Savior God, Jesus. Good night. Amen. Good night. Amen. 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 Good night. Bye-bye, Good night. Amen. I love you.